Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, we're here in San Antonio, Texas at Edgewood Veterans Stadium. It's Lockhart's home away from home as we've been here twice now. Tonight, the Lockhart Lions play Class 5A, District 14, Division II football against the San Antonio Kennedy Rockets. The Rockets come in tonight's contest 0-7 overall, 0-4 in district play. And the Lockhart Lions will come in tonight's matchup at 3-4 overall, 1-3 in district play. Obviously, head coach Brian Herman with his infamous slot T offense. You never know which way it's coming. Our team tonight, the usual, the one and only, RQA, Rock and Rev, Randy Fry, all the way from Missouri. Misery, as I like to call it, but Randy Fry, we welcome you. Thank you for being with us. You are the guy who got this all going, and it's always great to have you part of our team. And then the brains of the organization, the senior in high school, McKelty Altier, as she is our producer. She runs the show. She makes sure everything is going just fine and has done an astounding job for us, even in volleyball when she has to steal mascots and put them on the scoreboard for us. Then we have the guy right beside me, Emilio the Sarge Juarez, as he's going to be doing the color commentating, the stats, the scores from around the area. He's just going to basically do it all. And then myself, Scott Smith, doing play-by-play. -play. That is your team for tonight. Some early shout-outs. I know the wife is listening. Hello, Vanessa. How are you doing out there? Uh, give a shout-out to my son, Ethan Ham, who had a birthday yesterday, turned 17. Small boy, six foot four. Give a shout-out to my mom and dad and their Two dogs, as they're in San Marcos listening to this. Give a shout-out to my Aunt Donna in Topeka, Kansas. She started listening to us last week, and hopefully she's at it again this week. And then finally, I think my son Gunner, who was with us the last time we were here, yeah. he, uh, he is, I think, listening tonight. And if he is, just wanted to give a shout-out to him. I'm going to now hand it off to my right-hand man, the Sarge. And how's it going, everybody? Like I said... We're here live at Edgewood Veterans Memorial Stadium, and this is going to be your first Lockhart National Bank pregame show. And uh, tonight, Scott, Lockhart has has a chance to do something that they haven't done in the last two years, and that's win their fourth game of the season. So tonight they face a, a, a very gutsy Kennedy Rockets team, but they're coming into tonight's contest 0-7. Lockhart's coming in 3-4 and after suffering two defeats back-to-back -back at the hands of uh, – uh, Alamo Heights and uh, Bernie Champion, so it's it's been a tough time for these two teams for uh, the Lockhart Lions, and you know it's been difficult to say the last two weeks because they've been down early and big, and it was a tough climb, you know, uphill climb for the last two games. Tonight's going to be a you know hopefully a different story. As I talked to Coach Herman earlier, and uh, he's he's very confident that his his team is going to be able to rebound back and hopefully come out with a victory tonight. Well, you know, and the one thing that we can say about the, the Rockets here is the fact that they have pretty much played every stud team in our district this year. It's not like they've seen any weak teams yet. They've seen all the big dogs. So they're, they're, they've been up against the best. So now they're kind of hitting their – kind of lower end of the spectrum when it comes to their schedule. So we've only got three games left. We're here tonight, which, again, is our home away from home. Uh, beautiful stadium. They have a beautiful scoreboard. It's, just, it's like a college setting here, to be honest. Um, tonight, the Rockets wear their dark green with their white helmets and the white trim. Your Lions will be wearing all white with their maroon tops and the maroon helmets. And uh, – that's how the teams are looking as far as uniforms tonight. Um, as usual, we'll pretend that the coin toss will matter, but it probably won't because we'll probably do the same thing we always do. But yeah. we're going to take, a, uh, uh, I think, a quick commercial break and then come back to do the interviews. Am I correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Right. We'll hand the aux cord back. You're we listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Bright Magazine. 
Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy, or trade. Now you know the best of the story. You can tell the pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Christ's Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Christ's Market ships nationwide. Stop by Christ's Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, Christmarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. All right, we are back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium. We're getting ready to get through the interviews. I think first what we'll do is we'll get Emilio with his two interviews that he had, and then we'll go ahead and do the kids' interviews following that. So we'll go ahead and let Emilio get his stuff set up, and we'll get the coaches and one of his other interviews in here right now. Okay, yes, once again, I went down there and spoke to Coach Brian Herman of the Lockhart Lions, and uh, he had some interesting things to say, and uh, we'll go ahead and get to his uh, interview right now. And then after that, I had one more interview with the football player, and it's going to be a very special uh, interview that I had. But first, right now, here's uh, Coach Herman, head coach of the Lockhart Lions for the Christ Market Coaches Corner. All right, and here we are tonight for uh, the Christ Market Coaches Corner. I'm going to be a little Sarge Wattis, and I'm here sitting right next to uh, Coach Herman, Head coach of Lockhart Lions, how you doing, coach? I'm well, thank you. All right, coach, we're coming off of two losses in a row, you know, disappointing losses, but we got a Kennedy team that's that hasn't won a game so far in district. You know, at the end of the game last week against Alamo Heights, we saw a lot of sophomores coming in to play, and they were very productive, even though they, they might have been going against the second team of the Alamo Heights defense. Are we going to see more of the sophomores in this game where we're going to go back to the regular? Actually, Alamo Heights left their first teamers in uh, until the last drive. So all of the production that you saw, the, the, the scores in the third quarter, were all against their first team. So I was really pleased uh, with the kids that came in and stepped in and, and uh, were called upon. Um, you know, I would like I would like you to see a lot of people tonight, um, but it's just going to be a matter of how the game goes. Uh, bit we'll see all right uh one last question this past week you got a chance to go to the eighth grade football game where we had that cookout that you know we fed both uh, teams from Bastrop and Lockhart you know talk about that and uh, did you get a chance to taste the chicken because it was pretty good the chicken was <laughs> outstanding I was I at first I ate the hot dog and then I was I was driving home and I opened up that chicken I was like why did I even take a bite of that hot dog I wish I'd had the chicken first because it, it was it was awesome it was almost like a small turkey oh egg. it was so good the, the smoky flavor whatever it was whatever however it was seasoned it was it was yeah. perfect but uh, no we went to the eighth grade game and uh, unfortunately because of our practice schedule it's hard for me to get down there you know with the game starting at 5.30 and 6.30. So, you know, we're typically coming off the field varsity-wise between 6.45 and 7. Um, so it's hard for me to get over there. But I got over there and I got to catch a little bit of the B-team game. Um, I, unfortunately, I missed the A-team game because it was already completed. But I know they got the win. Yeah. And that was the big carryover game from last yeah, year. It so it definitely was. Uh, and I believe they're undefeated. So that's 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 awesome. So we're excited about those kids. And it was neat to see the tent set up and then the, the parent support and that kind of thing. So it was it was a good night, and then I hustled back to go watch uh, the girls' volleyball game to try to catch the end of that, too. So it was a good night. Right, definitely. All right, Coach, well, I'll go and let you go so you get back to uh, what you're doing. And uh, let's come. Let's go home with a victory tonight and surpass that win total. Yes, sir. Thank you. Go Lions. All right, Coach. All right, once again, this is the Christ Market Coaches Corner, and I'm going to search waters, and uh, we're going to take a break and be right back with some more action. All right, once again, that was Coach Herman, head coach of the Lockhart Lions with the Christ Market Coaches Corner. 
before I hand the aux cord back to Scott, I want to have uh, one special interview that I did. There's no introduction for this one because it's it's going out to a special certain someone uh, that's playing with uh, with high emotions tonight. And uh, hopefully, uh, Richard Moy, you're uh, you're able to hear this and uh, you know enjoy listen to what your son had to say before tonight's game. All right, this is Emilio Sarge Waters. I'm here with uh, Richard Moya. And uh, Richard, how you doing today? Good, sir. All right, you know, I, you know, I, I, you know, I want to send my condolences and you know prayers for healing for your father. I know he suffered a, a massive heart attack last week, but he's uh, he's in a hospital, and I, I, I was told that he's, you know, he's awake, but he's still a little weak from it. You know, talk about this week and the emotions that you've had to go through. You know, with everything that's going on. Um, it's been a battle. But I, I have my team around me to support me, and, like, it's just made the burden on me a little bit lighter. So, But I still have to accept the fact that he's healing in the hospital and that he's going to get better. Yeah. How much does it play into the factor knowing that, you know, people say it's cliche, but I, I know your dad, you know, and I could honestly say that if it was his choice, he'd have you out here instead of over there with him. Yeah. I told him that I wasn't going to go to the game Friday, and he told me, no, play. Yeah. Do 100% and go out and play with the team because memories like this will live on. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, one last thing. You know, is there anything you want to say to your dad? Because if, if he is listening tonight, I know your mom's going to be listening, but if he's listening tonight, is there anything that you'd like to say, you know, as he listens to the pregame show? Bro, I'm going all out for this game, baby. <laughs> all out. I hear you, man. All right. Well, good luck tonight, and uh, hopefully we'll be calling out your name a lot tonight. Yes, sir. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Oh, you, too. you too. All right. Once again, this is Miller Sarge Waters in a special interview with Richard Moya. And once again, that was uh, Richard Moya with a special interview. And, uh, of course, I want to give a shout-out to his dad, uh, Richard Moya Sr., who's in the hospital healing right now. And I uh, want to give you the best prayers and hope for healing Quick healing, you know, from all of us here at the Lion Country Broadcast Network for Scott Smith, myself, the Sarge, and for McKelty Altier and everyone else involved with Lockhart Lion Sports. I'm pretty sure we're all rooting for Richard Moya Jr. to come out here and put up a good performance and, uh, you know, give give back to what you've given to him, Mr. Moya. And, you know, you've ra- y'all raised a great kid. I was a coach of his when he played in Major League Baseball. He's I, I call him the gentle giant. And uh, it, it goes to show, he, you know, he's an amazing kid, and y'all have done a wonderful job. And like I said, best wishes and uh, prayers for a quick healing. And uh, I'll pass it off to you, Scott Smith. All right. So we're going to go ahead now and listen to the guys. Every game we try to get about three, four, or five of them. And I'm uh, going to start out with Ryan Ainsworth, who's a senior linebacker and tight end. It was not the longest interview in the world, but here it is. This is Scott Smith with Lion Country Broadcast Network, KMAX Sports through Vibe Magazine. I'm here with Ryan Ainsworth, senior linebacker, tied in. First of all, Ryan, how do you feel like your senior season's gone this year? I feel that it's actually going way better than I expected. We, uh, we had a good jump, but uh, we kind of slowed down towards the middle. But it looks like we're going to pick it up tonight with the W. That sounds great. My second question for you is, with this being your senior year, how, what are your goals for the remainder of the season for you and the team? Well, obviously the main goal is to uh, – to get three in a row and go to the playoffs, baby, that's the main goal. Very good, very good. The last one's the easiest question of all. Who do you want to give a shout-out to tonight? Number uh, number 28, Caleb Mades, cornerback slash tight end. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, you sir. have a great game. Yes, sir. Thank you, buddy. All right, that was Ryan Ainsworth, and that's what he had to say, as I said. He was short and sweet, but he got it to the point. Our next guy, this guy is uh, – in my son's class, and we kind of like him. This guy's a fireball. If you've never met him, boy, you need to. This is junior Alex Thompson, wide receiver, defensive back, and this is what he had to say. This is Scott Smith, uh, Lion Country Broadcast Network through KMAX Sports and Vibe Magazine. I'm here with Alex Thompson, junior wide receiver and defensive back. Alex, how has your junior season gone in your eyes this year? Uh, it went pretty good. I felt like we had a lot of team success, but like we've like had some ups and some downs. We won some games and lost some games. All right. Second question is, what are your goals for the remainder of the season? 
Uh, the big goal is uh, playoffs, but uh, just take one week at a time and win the remainder of these games and do something in the playoffs. Sounds good. My last one for you, who do you want to give a shout out to? Uh, my best friends, number three, Daytron Ellison and 33, uh, Aiden Hernandez. Uh, they're both juniors like me and I hope like we have a good next year and, uh, and the remainder of this year. Awesome. Thank you very much, sir. Good luck tonight. Thank you, sir. All right, and that was Alex Thompson, and that's what he had to say. We'll move right along here. We're going to get a senior here, and this is what Jared Galindo, senior defensive back and running back, had to say tonight. This is Scott Smith, Lion Country Broadcast Network through KMAX Sports and Byte Magazine. I'm here with Jared Galindo, senior defensive back and running back. Jared, how do you feel have your senior year has gone this far? It hasn't gone too bad. Uh, I wish it would have been a little better, but there's nothing I can do about it except keep playing until – season ends all right my next question is with this being your senior season what are your goals for the remainder of the season uh get more tackles than joseph garcia <laughs> there you go <laughs> and then my last question for you is who would you like to give a shout out to i'd like to give a shout out to my dad for getting me here all right well i want to wish you good luck and uh, let's get the w tonight all right, and that was Jared Glendo. And as you can see, none of these guys are talking very f for very long, but, you know, it's kind of fun listening to them. And the last one will be last week's offensive player of the game. Uh, he's kind of stolen his brother's identity as the baby bull, but that is Jordan Garcia, sophomore running back. Here's what he had to say. This is Scott Smith, Lion Country Broadcast Network, KMAX Sports to Vibe Magazine. I'm here with Jordan Garcia, sophomore running back, who coincidentally was the offensive player of the week last week. So, Jordan, how has your sophomore season gone this year? It's going great. I mean, I'm, I'm getting better every day with this team. So it's going really great right now, better than I expected. Very good. Uh, second question for you is going to be, what are your goals for the remainder of the season? Um, personally, I want to get over 1,000 yards. And, uh, yes, yeah, sir, I want to make the playoffs from, with my team. So, yeah, that's my goal for this year. That's a good goal to have. The last one's the easy one. Who do you want to give a shout-out to? I want to shout-out my grandpa, man. He's been there for, and my family. They've been there for, for through everything. So, I'm uh, just support me. They're there all, all the time I need them. So, all right. There you go. Well, that's Jordan Garcia, who was last week's Offensive Player of the Week. Good luck to you. Uh, thank you, thank you. All right, and that was Jordan Garcia, the sophomore running back. And, uh, you know, I'm not trying to let cats out of the bag or anything, but he informed me that he might even be in the starting lineup tonight with the way things have gone. So um, it's good to get out there and, and talk to these guys and give them some chance on the air. We actually started doing this, I want to say it was soccer season last year. We started interviewing players, and the parents started chiming in. They really liked that we were doing that, so we've been doing it ever since. Your Lions are running onto the stadium right now. So I guess I'm going to hand it back to Emilio because we're at that time. We're about 444 away from the start of the game. Uh, who's playing tonight? What's going on? Any shout-outs you want to give tonight? First of all, I got a message up here. It said, thanks for bringing this for those of us who can't make it to the game, and that's Lori Gaskin. I don't want to chop up the middle name, but uh, thank you for listening in, and uh, you know we, we're, we're pleased to bring the games to you this way. And uh, one more, Christine Moya Martinez. She said they enjoy listening to us every Friday. They'd like to give a shout-out to her nephew, Richard Moya, number 39. He decided to practice and play with his team tonight while his dad is recovering in ICU from a massive heart attack occurring after last week's game. Because that, because that's what his dad would want him to do is show up and uh, practice and play. She says, go Lions and get well soon, Richard. So uh, with that, Lions come up, coming out of their tunnel. And uh, let me go ahead and give you the Meitler storage game break let me see it's taking a little time for this thing to come up but well there was a game here last night yeah last night it was Memorial I mean yeah San Antonio Memorial Minutemen hosted uh uh man I'm growing up like Medina Valley and Medina Valley came out with a huge victory 49 to nothing and uh, what what is with technology nowadays? I know it's it's not giving us, but give us a few minutes and uh, <laughs> we'll get you. Okay, uh -huh. here we go, here we go. All right, the Mitler Storage game break of tonight's game is uh, Medina Valley won last night, forty nine to nothing against Memorial. Champion travels to Uvalde to take on the Coyotes. Lockhart Lions are playing here at uh, Edgewood Stadium against the Kennedy Rockets. And tonight in the district game of the week, 
Tyvee takes on Alamo Heights, Ooh. and the winner of that game gets one step closer to a district champion. You know, of course, Medina Valley will have the same record as the whoever comes out on top of tonight's contest. But uh, it's going to be an exciting uh, night of football games as tonight your Lockhart Lions take on the 0-7 Kennedy Rockets. Lockhart comes in 3-4 and four with a chance to, to surpass their win total from last two years. You know, which is, which it, you know, people might say, oh, that's four wins. But that's a huge accomplishment when you could score, you know, have more wins from the previous years. So as uh, we're getting ready for the national anthem, as uh, we'll go ahead and turn off our mics and turn on the crowd mic so you can listen to the to our national anthem. And we'll get right back to you as soon as the anthem is completed and be ready for kickoff here in about another two more minutes. All right, well, we're back. We're getting ready to go, and now it's whether we should even watch this coin flip. <laughs> Got a couple of uh, shout-outs. Uh, Roberta Smith says, thanks to all of you. Tony Schultz says, let's go, Lions. I've heard of Roberta. I'm not yeah. sure who she is, but I've heard of her. She's. I mean, she's always on here. I don't I'm know. A, One of our stalkers. I don't know who she yeah, is. It's so <laughs> – we're sitting here watching the flip. I think every single game we've deferred, and, yeah. and that's kind of how it has gone all year. And that's why I zoomed in so everybody could see because it always happens. It's If it doesn't happen tonight, it's their fault. Yeah. I could, oh, their scoreboard is amazing. Look at that. <laughs> I have never, <laughs> been, I have never been able to flip a coin <laughs> with a penny it. though. <laughs> well, you guys were part of it. We did it again. We'll be deferring and we'll be kicking off. 
We have done that every <laughs> single game <laughs> this year, and I think last year we did it every single game but two. Yeah. So, so we're getting ready to get this thing going. Lockhart will be going from right to left tonight here in the first half, uh, in the first quarter. <laughs> Uh, as I said, Lockhart Lions wearing all white maroon numbers, maroon helmets with the Lion logo on the side. <coughs> Your Rockets down there are wearing all green with white trim, white helmets, and numbers on the side of their helmets. And because of UIL rules, we cannot show this game live, so be sure to get on that Lion Country Broadcast Network, hit the link, and listen to us live as we get ready to go <coughs> with the play-by-play -play as your Lockhart Lions take on the San Antonio Kennedy Memorial Rockets. Or San Antonio Kennedy Rockets. Yes. Yeah, I get mixed up with this Memorial Kennedy here. But nonetheless, we're about to click off, get ready to click on, and listen to some football. And uh, go Lions. <laughs> Doo -doo -doo. Let's see, number one and number two. So it looks like they're going to start out with James Butler, and Gregory San Miguel is going to be back deep to receive. And the way we've been kicking off lately, that's a possibility for them to receive it as Eduardo Ponce has been putting it through the back of the end zone lately. Except for his onside kicks, which he's been pretty good at lately. Surely we're not going to try an onside kick the first part of the game. But we've, been, we've been kicking them like crazy here lately, so you never know. Again... Ponce has tree-type tree legs. These things are huge. I think his legs are bigger than my waist, and that's pretty big. That's close enough, yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty close. And here again, we're at our home away from home, Edgewood Veterans Stadium. There's the kick. It's a nice booming kick. It's got it the five. He's going to bring it out. They're going to hand it off to the 10, to the 15, out to the 20, to about the 22. That's where San Miguel will end up falling to the ground. They try to reverse on the kickoff, and it didn't it, do a whole lot. No, it, it caused a little distraction, but the Lions were able to pick up on it real quick and uh, make the stop before they were able to get to the 25-yard line where they usually start off on a, on a touchback. Well, and as usual, the offensive line is bigger than our defensive line, and that seems to be every, every game that we play. So we'll see how things go. I'm guessing, like every other team in the state of Texas, they're going to go with the spread offense. Twin receivers to the left, twin to the right. It's Sanchez in back. He's going to come out firing and overthrows his receiver. He was trying to hit San Miguel just down the left side, overshot him, and it was almost picked off there by the, one of the men that we uh, had an interview with, with Alex Thompson, but he wasn't quite ready for that one. Yes, definitely. It was a laser throw that he threw, and it just outside the ex outstretched arms of the receiver. And like I said, we had two lines right there and just <coughs> went right between both of them. Well, and as I, I always said, I don't care what you're doing when you're left-handed. Left-handers look good doing anything. Yes. And they've got a left-handed quarterback. I love watching it already. He's got a cannon for an arm. Twin receivers to the left, twin receivers to the right. Going to roll out to the right. He's going to fake it. He's going to try to throw on the run, and he hits his receiver out at the 38-yard line. He gets out to about the 41. That was number 15 on the reception, Nathan Martinez. Nice pitch and catch for a first and 10 for the Rockets. First and 10 at the 41-yard line of San Antonio. Yeah, it was a great throw by the quarterback right there to be able to get out from under the pressure that was coming right at him. You know, step forward, cut back to his left, and made a nice throw to his receiver. So they're going to have one receiver to the, to the left, three to the right. Sanchez. <laughs> I want to say that's Tellez in the backfield. Here they go. They're looking to throw again. He's on the run. He's out to the 43, to the 45, and he gets hit by... The big man, Eliza Sanchez, brings him down from behind. Had a little bit of help there by Caleb Jennings. Yes, great pursuit from behind from Eliza Sanchez to run down the quarterback. And quarterback had got some nice speed on him. Just uh, tried cutting back, and Sanchez was right there on his backside to make the stop. Second and five, the ball's at the 46-yard line of Kennedy. They're moving the ball pretty well already. Two receivers to the left, two receivers to the right. Shotgun formation. <laughs> 
And again, I believe that is Tellas in the backfield. I've yet to see his number, so I'm going to try to catch it here. No, it is not. And there's a penalty flag already. And that is number 45. That is uh, Sandoval in the backfield. It's going to be false start on the rocket, so it's going to move him back five yards. It's going to make it second down and about 11. Oh, it's going to be second down and 10 for the Rockets after the penalty. So this Sandoval, Fernando Sandoval, he is a sophomore, and he's a big kid. Uh-oh. My eyes in the sky is checking in with me. I'm going to have to see what's going on here. Let's, let me run the play first. Here comes shotgun formation. He's going to run. He's on his feet. He's out to the 45, to the 50. Across midfield, he's down to the 40, Big where he's block. tackled by Alex Sosa. And they're going to get another first and 10. Great run by, the, by Sanchez, the quarterback, to get into the open field area. Had a huge block in front of him to spring him out about another extra 10 more yards to get a huge first down for the Rockets. Well, I'm going to give a shout-out right now to the guy who just texted me. That would be Rudy Cadillo. He just said he's not used to listening to us without calling a volleyball game to me <laughs> as the girls' regular season is over. Twin receivers to the right, twins to the left. Sandoval in the backfield. Sanchez, the quarterback. They're going to roll out left. He's looking to throw. He hits his man wide open down to the 30 to the 25. And he's brought down there by number 22, George Renteria, but move the sticks again. Also, Rudy Cadillo, I appreciate you the other night at that volleyball game when I decided to have an insulin reaction right there in the third game, and <laughs> he became a play-by-play -play guy while I was trying to get my blood sugar up. I had to give McKelty a, a bag of Skittles tonight because I stole half of hers, and I'm sure she was excited about that. We're okay tonight, though. We had our, our uh, Lockhart barbecue, yeah, so we're good. The Christ Corner, Coach's Corner, Christ, <laughs> Christ Market, is, came to San Antonio. <laughs> First and 10 from the 25-yard line. Twin receivers both sides. Sanchez is the quarterback. He's going to hand it off. That's the first time Sandoval up the middle. He's going to get about three on the carry. Brought down there by big number 75, Faustino Gonzalez. We don't call his name very often. Probably about every play it seems yeah, like. Yeah, just about, yeah. Faustino Gonzalez is a big man. So 8.50 to go here in the first quarter. Nobody has scored yet. It is second and about, looks like eight. Looks like the ball's at the 23-yard line of Lockhart. One receiver to the left, triplets to the right. Sanchez is back there with Sandoval in the backfield. Here it comes, rolling out left. He's looking. He's going to throw it on the right side. Devin Clark with the interception. He's, he's got to the 10, 15. He's to the 20, 25. There's a flag on the field. He's out to the 50-yard line, still moving. He's still going. Devin Clark, six foot five senior, is going to go all the way. Touchdown, but there is a flag. The flag was thrown in the area to where it's usually called for holding. Let's hope it's holding because Devin Clark, senior basketball player, six foot five, Went the distance for his first high school varsity touchdown. Yes, definitely. As we wait the call for the penalty. Oh, they called on them, so that's going to be a touchdown. Touchdown is going to stand. So, Devin Clark <laughs> scores his first touchdown. And, folks, I'm just telling you right now, I know we're not at basketball season yet, but you've got to come watch this kid play basketball. He's going to college somewhere. He yeah. is an amazing basketball player. Yes, definitely. Picks it off about the 10 yard line and heads 90 yards down the far sideline to make to <laughs> score his first varsity touchdown as a low car line. And Devin Clark, you know, he not only had the height, but he had the speed to get down to the get down into the end zone. Yeah, Devin's kind of fast. Yeah. And Faustino is on for the extra point. I checked that. That's James. Why am I calling him yeah, Faustino? James. Yeah, we call him every other play. James. The snap is back. The hold is down. The kick is up, and it is right through the uprights as Lockhart Lions taking seven to nothing lead without their offense even having to come on and take a uh, take one single play as uh, Devin Clark intercepts the football, runs it back 90 yards for a Lockhart Line touchdown with 8:08 left to go here in the first quarter, and we'll go and take a quick break. You're listening to Line Country Broadcast Network and KMX Sports through Bright Magazine. 
Meitler Storage is locally owned by Angela and Darren Meitler. Since 2002, Meitler Storage is just off Highway 142 in Maxwell, Texas, across from the Valero. For an appointment, call 512-398-7100. Your business is always appreciated. And a reminder, once a lion, always a lion. Go Lions! All right, we're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium, Lockhart's home away from home here in San Antonio, Texas, as we got to see a 6'5 guy run 90 yards, and this kid is fast. And the one thing I can't wait to see is how many times he's going to dunk the basketball this year. He <laughs> is an amazing basketball player. He's a great kid. And the fact that he scored his first varsity touchdown, sorry I got a little bit excited there, but I used to coach him uh, coach him in the offseason of basketball, so it was like watching your kids score a touchdown. Yes, I, definitely. Very and, excited. And I understand that, too, because he, he's a young man. He always comes to my house, asks if he could borrow my lawnmower so he could make extra cash on the side cutting yards and, you know, uh, down there, I talked to him, when are you going to cut my yard next? And he said, tomorrow, <laughs> sir. So, you know, I'll, maybe I'll let him go on Sunday instead. There's that onside kick, but uh, tree trunk <laughs> legs there kicked it a little too hard and yeah. it went out of bounds. It didn't have that bounce like he had the previous times that they've had. They went for an onside. It Pon just kept rolling a uh, roly-poly down. Ponce is one of the best onside kickers I've seen in high school football. That was not pretty, but the other 16 he's done – have been pretty good, <laughs> even though we've only recovered one of them. Yeah, but, <laughs> but he's given the law, he's given the Lions a chance to recover the ball after each one of those. So, going to be great field position for him as they'll have first and ten at our forty-nine yard line. Um, seven to nothing, Lions. Eight oh eight to go here in the first quarter of play, and it's going to be the Rockets sending two receivers to the right, two to the left. Sanchez is the quarterback. Put on a good show already tonight. Sandoval in the backfield. He's looking to throw again. He almost reminds me of Michael Vick back there. Here he comes rolling out left. George Renteria can't bring him down. He's going to run. He's still on his feet. He's down to about the 44-yard line. He's going to get hit hard on the far sideline. I didn't see who hit him, but they did hit him hard. Renteria had the first shot at him and missed. Was that number 38 that hit him? Eli Green? Yes. I think Eli Green's the one that cleaned it. 7.38 and counting here. Your lines are on top, 7 to nothing. But the Rockets are moving the ball pretty easily against us. We just got a nice pickoff. Yes, definitely. So two receivers to the left, two to the right. Sanchez is the quarterback. Sandoval in the backfield, standing right beside him. He will carry the ball to the right side where he gets stacked up. He's still on his feet, though. This is why this kid plays as a sophomore. He's a big boy. And he gets it down to about the 41-yard line. Eliza Sanchez right there for the tackle, as well as uh, number 12. Where's my list at? Oh, there we went hiding. Number 12, Juan Ramirez, who's getting some action tonight as well. So, you know. Well, uh, you know, Elijah's been playing really well on defensive line lately. So we have one receiver. Nope, check that. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. He likes number 15, Nathan Martinez, there on the left side. They're going to roll out to the left. He's going to throw it, and he is tackled by Devin Clark. Almost had himself a second one. He was looking <laughs> for it, but again, long arms of Devin Clark. They moved the sticks again. He was able to hit his receiver. I've been impressed with Sanchez. He made one mistake, but he's looked good so far. Yes. First and 10 from the 38-yard line of Lockhart. 6.20 and counting here in the first quarter. 7 to nothing. the Lions on top. I'd like to see what our offense is going to do at some point tonight. Yeah, well, the defense scores another touchdown. We might not be able to see them until the second quarter. That's true. That is true. I love watching the big screen here. Uh, three receivers to the right, one to the left, one in motion. Here they go. They're rolling out left, running fake option. He's going to gain about two yards where he was smothered there. And I'm guesstimating we're going to see Faustino come out of that. Yes, we did. As well as, once again, Eliza Sanchez, who's been in there probably for about the last three, four tackles. He's been a, a huge part of those. Well, I th was Elijah our defensive player of the week last week? Uh, I think a couple of weeks ago. A couple you know of weeks what? Yeah, ago. It, was a, it was shared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's it was true. shared. That's true. Between uh, Eddie Tukar. Yes, yes. And Elijah Sanchez. So it's second and eight. The ball is at the 36-yard line of your Lions here. One receiver to the left, three to the right. 
Sandoval in the backfield with Sanchez. Shotgun formation. Going to look to his left. He's going Huge to, pressure up front. Going to come back to the left. Oh, he gets hit from behind. He has some opening there, but he got hit from behind, but I didn't see who made the tackle. I want to say it was Alex Sosa. I think Number that was Alex Sosa, but there's a man down. It'll be third and 11 from the 40 or 39-yard line of Lockhart. Actually, it was number 75, Faustino Gonzalez with the tackle from behind. I knew behind. I saw five. Yeah. <laughs> so Faustino Gonzalez and Elijah Sanchez right now are battling it out to see who's going to be defensive player of the game, although Devin Clark kind of trumps them with one interception right. for 90 yards. Yeah. But uh, it's it's – you know, both Faustino and Elijah Sanchez have gotten uh, defensive player honors already so far this year. Devin Clark is stating his case, especially with that long touchdown oh run. Oh, my on gosh, the it was the quarterback that went down. So he's going to limp off the field. I bet he'll be back based off what I'm seeing. But, man, he, he must have got hit hard because he's gimping a little bit. I'm going to have to find out who the backup is. Now, oh, we had that little be, green oh, sheet. Oh, San Miguel. I, I remember the green sheet. Matter We're, of fact, there goes San Miguel into yep, the offense San right now. San Miguel. So. All right, so Gregory San Miguel, who's a junior. He's a receiver. Now he's a quarterback. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. We'll see how this guy does. Third and 11. He's going to roll out right. He's a right-hander. He's in trouble right now. And he throws it, and he got outside the tackle, so it's not going to be rough. Or I'm going brain uh, dead. Yeah. <laughs> Attentional grounding. Attentional grounding, thank you. Yeah, he got it back to the original line of scrimmage, so it wouldn't matter if there was a receiver in the, in the area. He got out the tackle box and was able to get the ball, you know, in the area of the original line of scrimmage, so I'm no penalty. I'm guesstimating they're going to be going for it. We'll see. I mean – whether you're three and four or zero and seven at this point in the season, you just go for everything like this. But no, they're they're lined up to punt, huh? I did Looks not. Like, uh, what was it? Gosh, I don't see a number on the guy. So it looks like Daytron Ellison is back to receive it. It's not a bad punt. It's caught there by Galindo. He's going to go. Oh, what's going on? They're going to say he called a fair catch. I did not see it, but. Okay. Well, it looks like we're going to get our first chance to see the Lockhart Lions offense. And uh, it'll be first and 10 from their own 14-yard line. It was a nice punt, nice spiral. It wasn't like the kid from earlier, like Taylor. Oh, was it Taylor, that yes. punter that was an All-American punter who kicked the ball like 40 miles in the air and about yes. 70 yards down the field? So here we go, tight formation slot T. Sophomore quarterback Jackie Edwards is underneath. They give it to Daytron Ellison around the right side. He got nothing. Might have lost a yard. Good job on the defense there. And he got nothing. Second and 10. 4.22 to go here in the first quarter. 7 to nothing. Your lines are on top. And this is a Lockhart Lions first possession of the ball game. So here we go, tight formation again. They're going to give it to Aldonia around the left side. Here he goes. He's out to the 25. He's to the 30. He's brought down a row. He's going to stay on his feet. He gets down to the 36-yard line. A great run. That was almost all Aldonia on the run. So he'll move the sticks out to the 36-yard line. Yes, once again, he's always used his speed to get around the outside edge, but this time he used his speed and his uh, brute force as he was able to get through the line, hit, bounce off a couple of uh, rockets, and spin around and pick up some positive yards. Here yardage. we go again. Detron Ellison around the right side. He's out to the field. 45, to the 50, down to the 40. He cuts back to the middle to the 30, to the 25. He's still moving. He's inside the 10. Five, touchdown, Detron Ellison. What a run by Ellison. And the, Rock, uh, the Lockhart Lions are now up 13 to nothing over the Rockets. And I did not see what was that run, about 60, 64 yards. 64, 64 yards. yard touchdown run for Daytron Ellison as Jaimez is coming back in to kick the extra point. Comes a snap his back, the hold is down, That's the kick is up, Ponce. and it's good. Yeah, it is. It's Ponce in with the extra point try, 
So with that, it's going to make it Lockhart Lions 14, your Kennedy Rocket 0 with 3.31 left to go here in the first quarter, and we'll take another break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports Beef White Magazine. Johnny and Sons Paint and Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny and Sons 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny and Sons Paint and Body, we won't steer you wrong. All right, and we are back again, our home away from home, Edgewood Veterans Stadium here in San Antonio, Texas. This is our second game of the year here. Going to give a shout out to my brother who's asking me if I'm on the air tonight. So I'm going to tell him yes and then tell him I'm giving him a shout out. I have someone else I got to give a shout out to here in just a second. All right. The other one that I saw was Melissa Ruggio. So I got to see what she's up to. So here we go, getting ready to kick off yet again. Ah, I got a happy birthday for Melissa Ruggio. Thank you, young lady. I appreciate that. McKelty Altier, she texted us earlier and wanted to know when she want, they, we wanted her back up here. <laughs> I just got that message up. So the ball has gotten at the 10-yard line. They're going to fake the reverse this time. Good move. He's up the middle to the 20, to the 25, out to the 30. Great run there by San Miguel. Nice little nifty fake handoff. Brings it out to the 30-yard line where they'll have first to 10. 14 to nothing. Lockhart Lions are on top with 3.21 to go here in the first quarter. Yes, that last touchdown drive for the Lockhart Lions took all of three plays and 59 seconds off the clock, capped off by a 64-yard touchdown run by Daytron Ellison. Yeah, we just saw it on TV again. <laughs> I love being in here with these guys. We get to see all the cool stuff. After this next play, we get a quick break. I'll give it, give everybody an update for the Meitler Storage game break. All right, we got twin receivers both sides. And I cannot tell if that's Sanchez out there. It looks like it. Yep, it's Sanchez. He's back. He's back. They give it out to uh, – good gosh, I'm trying to call their guys now. Give it out to Sandoval, and he gets it out to about the 36-yard line where it will be second and four. I thought that was Sanchez. He just has a different kind of build and swagger about him when he's back there. It's Eliza Sanchez and uh, Juan Ramirez in there for the tackle. And once again, Eliza Sanchez has his name called out. Well, you know, it's amazing. I, I Again, I hadn't heard much about their quarterback, but Angel Sanchez, he's good. This kid's a good quarterback. So we've got three receivers to the left, one to the right. We'll see what we have stored up for. There's a swing out to the left Almost side. Almost an interception. It. My goodness, and who was that out there? Was that Noah Garcia? Who was that? Nope, nope, nope. We don't number have 20. a number 20. No, yeah, number 20 is Adrian Yanez. Ah, yes. the new Because my, my roster doesn't have him on here, so I'm going to look at this other roster. 2.31 to go here in the first quarter. 14 to nothing. Third and four for the Rockets. Yeah, great move by, by Yanez to, to notice that it was going to be a quick pass to the receiver. He jumped right in front of it, just a little bit over his outstretched hands, but enough to deflect the ball from the receiver. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Sandoval in the backfield with Sanchez. He's going to look to his left. He swings it out again. It's intercepted. intercepted. And Yanez with the interception. Then there's a fumble. Lockhart has recovered down at the 15-yard line. So I guess if you wanted to say Yanez with the interception, then he fumbled it, and Juan Ramirez recovers the fumble. Actually, interception was by George Renteria. Oh, it was. Yeah, George Renteria jumped in front of that pass, and uh, great awareness by George Renteria to notice the quick pass again and uh, stepped right in front of it and took it away. And Unfortunately, he fumbled, but it was recovered by Lockhart Lions, so it'll be first down and 10 for the Lions. At the 15-yard line. Real quick shout-out to uh, Kevin Mills, one of the big dogs of our company here, listening from Bossier City, Louisiana, watching a little softball, I have a feeling. So we have a receiver split to the left. Oh, they jump. That's too bad because I have a feeling we we're going to see a pass to Cortland Zambrano possibly. He's another of the basketball players who's yet to score a touchdown. Not that I'm biased to basketball players. <laughs> so we will get a cheap five yards on the carry. 
Yeah, Kevin was telling me never to do that again with the insulin reaction because he did not want to have to call the play-by-play. And <laughs> I felt like a complete idiot, to be honest with you, but it all worked <laughs> out in the end. So we have Zambrano to the left. They're looking at him. Little lob play. He goes up and Got catches it. it. There it is, another basketball player. Cortland Zambrano on the touchdown reception, his first varsity touchdown. The basketball players came to play tonight. 2-10 to go here in the first quarter, 20 to nothing. The Lions are on top. Great pass by Jackie Edwards. He didn't really fire it in there, but he put a nice touch in there and gave the basketballer a chance to jump up there, tip the ball up, and make the catch. Where was that from? I didn't catch Ten it. Ten yards out. Ten yards out. Now they got Alfredo Now they got Hymas in. They're messing me up tonight they with Snap his back to hold it down, to kick his up, and it is good. With that extra point try now, it is Lockhart Lions 21. San Antonio Rocket zero with 2-10 left to go here in the first quarter. And uh, McKelty, take it away. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Bright Magazine. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. So uh, after, the, after the interception by uh, George Renteria, Lockhart Lions take all of 10 seconds off the clock and scores on a 10-yard touchdown pass from Jackie Edwards Jr. to uh, Cortland Zambrano, another basketball player scoring his first touchdown as a Lockhart Lion. Take it away. All right, we got the Mitler Storage game break for tonight's contest. Uh, we got champion Chargers all over Uvalde with 7.05 left to go in the first quarter. It's 20 to nothing. Tyvee and Alamo Heights having a good one with 3.26 left to go in the first. It is 14 to seven, Alamo Heights on top. And here at uh, Edgewood Stadium is Lockhart Lions 21, Kenny the Rocket 0. Butler with it. He's going to keep it. He's out to the 15 to the 20. He's a fast kid. He's out to the 25. And the ball's oh. on the ground. Another turnover. And Lockhart has it. And this one is the man that I interviewed. Ryan Ainsworth, the senior, comes up with the fumble recovery. The defense and special teams have owned this game so far. Man, I wish I had them on my fantasy league. Yeah, right we there. would be really killing They've it. already had one score, two interceptions. This is the kind oh. of thing we need against Randy Fry yes. when he's always beating us. Yes, definitely. I'm going to have to look for the Lions, Lockhart Lions, when I start searching them. But a huge turnover for the Lions, and once again, they got the ball back at striking distance. First and 10 at the 22-yard line. Man split out to the right. Flags out again. They jump again. Every time Daytron goes into motion, they, they've been jumping. And, you know, for all, ten, all intents and purposes, purpose, yeah, because, you know, Daytron is probably someone that they're looking at. Well, he's not that fast. No, nah, he, he's that small, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's so what it is. That's what it is. They yeah, jump because they want to see him. These Ellison boys don't run very <laughs> fast. I hear the whole family's fast, to be honest. <laughs> Devin Clark, the 6'5", senior, is out by himself. They're going to go straight up the middle, though. And I can't, oh, that's the baby bull coming around the side. He's trying to get forward, and he's going to get around the 10-yard line. So he's going to, or I, yeah, the 10-yard line. So he got almost to the first down. Yeah, he did. They're going to give him the stick. First and goal now. Ball is at the 10-yard line exactly. First and goal to go from the 10 with uh, 126 left to go on the clock. It's going to be handoff around the right side right, to yeah. uh, Jesus, Al 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 Jesus Aldana. is going to be in for a line touchdown. Ten-yard touchdown. Jeez. So with 114 to go and the clock's still moving. Huh. Hmm. I'm not sure. Okay, they finally stopped it. We'll write 110 down. <laughs> but right now with 110 to go, it's 27 to nothing. The Lockhart Lions on top here in the first quarter, and they're going to have Ponce out to kick the extra point. Offensive player of the game is going to be tough. It definitely is. As Ponce gets set to kick the extra point, snap his back to hold his down, to kick his up, and it is through. So I get with that extra point try, is going to be Lockhart Lions 28, San Antonio Rockets 0 with 1.10 left to go on the clock. And go, I'll go ahead and give a breakdown of this score drive. It's a, a two-play scoring drive, took 48 seconds off the clock, capped off by a 10-yard touchdown run by Jesus Aldana, and uh, 
Take it away, McKelty. Peace. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and keep it here. Twenty-eight to nothing. One ten to go here in the first quarter. Just wanted to give us a breather here, <laughs> uh, and we've had enough commercials for now. <laughs> This has been one of the most exciting games I've seen in three years as far as our defense coming up with big plays, our offense doing their job. Yeah. Um, but the scary thing is we really haven't stopped the Rockets. They're stopping themselves. Right, exactly. And, you know, with the two interceptions and then you had the fumble on the kickoff, you know, pen, you know turnovers is, what, is what's going to make or break the game. And right now Lockhart has a three to nothing turnover ratio against uh, the Rockets so you know it hasn't worked out too well for the Rockets on the other hand it's been working out well for the Lockhart Lions as they've been able to capitalize each penalty each uh, turnover into seven points. Hamez is going to kick off this time it's going to go back there that is number two that's San Miguel he's going to keep it going around the right side and he's brought down at the 10 yard line Lockhart is fired up right now. You know what? What I just saw right there, Scott, is uh, this is the fourth time that they've attempted to or or did or fake or reverse on the kickoff. And as the Lions were running down, they see what's going on in the backfield they're, where they're trying to attempt a, a, a reverse. Right. They're waiting until they split up and see who has the ball. Then they're going into attack. They're not making a quick decision. They're waiting until they cross pass and see who still has the football in. Right there, you know, a stop on the Rockets' 10-yard line. They got 90 yards to get to the end zone. And they're almost at a time on the play clock. Yes, great stop by the by the special teams. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. They got it off in time. They get it to Sandoval on the outside. He's going to go down quickly. As a matter of fact, he gets thrown out of bounds at the six. I don't even think that was Sandoval. No, it was not. It was number 15, Nathan Martinez. As he gets knocked out of bounds, I want to say it was around the six. Nope, they said seven. Seven-yard line. So the defense is playing well right now. Of course, they've been playing well all night. It's just they don't, had that bend but don't break kind of thing so far. 33 seconds to go here in the first quarter. It's been all the Lions in scoring, but really it's been Kennedy on offense. Yes, it has. So we have two receivers to the right, two to the left. They're wait, the play clock is down again. And they got it off in time. Sanchez is looking. He's going to run. He's in trouble. He's going to throw now. And it is caught maybe? I can't tell. Guys run away. They're going to say he caught it. And that's going to be a first and ten as the reception was made by Ted, let's see, Carrillo. Yeah, Ted Carrillo or Carrillo. Great throw and catch right there. Gives the Rockets a uh, first down and not only that, but a little breather as uh, the clock hit zero to end the first quarter. So at the end of the first quarter, it is 28 to nothing. Your Lions are on top. We're going to take a commercial break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Bite Magazine. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy, or trade. And now you know the best of the story. All right, we are back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium. 28 to nothing, the Lions are on top. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of a strange game, to be honest, because... The domination on offense has been by the Rockets, but the scoring drives have been by us because it's been fast and furious. First and 10 from the 22-yard line. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Sandoval up the middle. No, check that again. It is Martinez with it. He's going to get close to a first and 10. And he's going to pick up just enough for the first down and picks up 11 yards on the run. Actually, great, yeah, great run up the middle. Great it actually was Sandoval. Yeah. It was Sandoval. Sandoval running well tonight, first and 10 again. They'll have the ball first and 10 from the 32-yard line. Again, it's a weird game. They have totally been moving this ball on us. It's just little mistakes have cost them right now. Yes, definitely. And hey, we're not even a team that throws the football when we've putting up points quick. Twin receivers both sides, one in motion. 
Handoff up the middle to Sandoval, and they're going to penalty flags are out. Looks like it's going to be false start on the Rockets on the right side of the line. And that's what it is, going to mark them back five yards, where it's going to be first down and 15. Back at their own 21-yard line, 22-yard line. Things we've seen tonight for first. I'm sorry, uh, 27-yard line, I'm sorry. Devin Clark, senior, 6'5", a basketball player, scores on an interception of 90 yards for the return, and his buddy Cortland Zambrano, also a basketball player, scores on a touchdown pass from Jackie Edwards. Still first down, Sanchez throwing, completes it to his man right there, and is brought down by s number 32. That is David Garcia. They get a lot of their yardage back. They'll get out to about the 38-yard line. And that was caught by number four. That is, again, Ted Carrillo. Yeah, great pass right there. And uh, great awareness by uh, Noah Garcia to go in there and make the stop in the open field. So we have twin receivers to the left, twin receivers to the right. Sanchez barking out the signals. He gets the ball. He's going to hand it off. Sandoval's waiting for his run, but he gets oh. stacked up. Oh, my goodness. That, that's a new number. number We're not used to calling that one. Jonathan, Jonathan Trejo. Trejo. I was starting to look for Faustino, and I was like, wait a minute. That's not him. <laughs> Senior defensive lineman getting in on some playing time here tonight. You know, great stop by, uh, by Trejo as he was able to throw the runner from behind and make the stop, run him down. So we are at third and seven, 944 to go here in the first quarter. Our second, first half, sorry, 28 nothing. One receiver to the right, two to the left. Sanchez is kind of motioning for people to move in different areas. They're going to call timeout. Time they don't like what they see, so they'll call timeout. 9.25 to go here in the first half. 28 to nothing. Your Lockhart Lions are on top. We're going to take a commercial break. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Bright Magazine. You can tell the pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Kreitz Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, KreitzMarket.com. That's K-R-E-U-Z market.com. No sauce, no forks, just good taste naturally. All right, we're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium here in San Antonio, Texas. Lockhart's home away from home. We, uh, we've had some big plays. It's not been little, big, long drives. It's been here's the ball touchdown kind of things. Yes, definitely. And you know, the biggest one of all was the first score for the Lockhart Lions is uh, Devin Clark intercepts the ball, runs it all the way back 90 yards, but after cutting back, he probably ran it about 120 yards to get into oh, yeah. the end zone. <laughs> he was just out for a stroll. <laughs> yeah. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Sanchez in the backfield going to roll out right. He's in trouble. He's got out of it. Boy, he's got nifty feet. It is picked off. Galindo with the interception. He's to the 30, and he gets it down to about the 25-yard line. Jared Galindo, the kid we interviewed before the game, maybe that's what I need to do is whoever I interview is going to have big games. <laughs> nice interception. Again, we'll get the ball, even and though they've been dominating the play. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, get the ball at, at the 25-yard line deep in Rocket territory. You know, just another one of those uh, costly mistakes for the Rockets' <laughs> offense and another interception makes it the third of the night. You know, it's... It's been a rough night for the quarterback, but like you said, they've been able to move the ball, just mistakes has been costing them. So here we go, tight formation, slot T. Jackie Edwards going to hand it off right up the middle. That's Daquan Ellison. He's around the corner to the 10, to the 5. Daquan Ellison fumbles, and I think it went out of bounds. In the They're going to say it's a touch. Be a touch so we lose the ball. They'll get it back. Daquan Ellison fumbles at the 2-yard line, and it went out of bounds. So they will get the ball, unfortunately, because we were about to score again. So that kind of yeah. takes the air out of the tires. It sure does. You know, first uh, that's the first touch of the night for Daquan Ellison, who was able to get around the outside, got towards the about the three, four yard line, 
and got a little careless with the, with the holding on to the football. It looked like he was trying to stretch out yes. for the pylon, just lost control of it. Ball was able to bounce in, in the end zone and out the side of it. It's going to be a touchback for the Rockets, and they get the ball back at their own 20-yard line. Well, there's been a lot of turnovers tonight. So now we're going to start this all over again with Sanchez and company. One receiver to the right, two to the left. He's going to hand it up the middle to Sandoval. About a two to three yard gain, I'm going to say two. Second and eight. Still a little bit of gimpy there, Sanchez. Yeah, but it's still good to see him back out there as he went down after getting tackled early in the first quarter. Well, he, I had mentioned it earlier. He reminds me a lot of Michael Vick. I mean, this he keeps drives alive with his feet. And I'm not talking about running with it, just running around in the backfield yeah. scrambling. So we, unfortunately, with the three interceptions, you know, the Lions defense has stepped up in a, in a huge way for tonight. Two receivers to each side. Sanchez is looking to throw again. He's in trouble, and he's going down. But not without a fight. So we had number 70 again, Jonathan Trejo, with a little bit of help there from George Renteria. Third and about 13. Eight minutes to go here in the first half. Ball is going to be marked back at their own 17 after the loss. Five yards on the loss. Pretty good showing for Lockhart as far as fans are concerned. Bands already down, getting themselves ready to go. Again, if you haven't seen the Lockhart Band, you need to come watch them. They are very talented and very good at what they do. Twin receivers to the right, twin receivers to the left. Sanchez rolling out right. Going to look deep. He's in trouble again. Slings it out to Sandoval. He's out. Oh, there's flags down to the 20, to the 30, to the 40. Sandoval gets upended by Thompson. That was a nice tackle by Thompson, but not after a big gain. I have a feeling yeah. this is on Lockhart. Yeah, it's going to be rough in the passer probably, but look who's down there on, down the field also to make the tackle. Number 70, Jonathan Trejo, trailed the runner all the way from his lineman position to come and make the tackle as uh, Thompson flipped the runner over, and uh, Trejo was there to clean it up. So it was a big gain already, but they're going to get a little bit more on top of it, I have a feeling. And they're going to be in our territory here pretty quick. And they are. So just like that, they were deep in their own territory. Now they're on our side of the field. And, you know, we talked about this last year, and, and, it, and it's happening again. Every once in a while, we do something we probably shouldn't be doing, and it ends up costing. Yes, definitely. And I think what happened right there is, you know, Sanchez was there in the back having a little trouble, you know, trying to get, at, you know, get some free space. And the defender just jumped in front as he was getting ready to throw the ball. He threw it over his arms, and as he came down, he made contact with the quarterback around the head area, which caused a penalty right there. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things that could have been prevented. Uh, yeah, but at the same time, the line was trying to make a play. Yes. The defensive line was trying to make a play and just happened on his way down. He made, you know, contact with the quarterback's helmet, which is why the penalty was called. So they will have first and 10 at the Lockhart 41-yard line. They've been here numerous times, but they've turned it over. Coach said in his pregame he would like to give a lot of guys playing time tonight, and so far they've been able to do so. It definitely has. You know, it, it's huge plays by the defense to get the ball back to the offense, and the offense just making quick work with the short field position with the exception of the long touchdown run that Daytron Ellison had early in the, you know, halfway through the first quarter. Twin receivers to each side. Sanchez in the backfield with Sandoval. The line has done a great job for Lockhart. We'll see what happens this time. He's looking again, going deep. Galindo with another pick. Galindo goes up, picks it off at the 15-yard line. Good gravy. This is getting crazy on the defensive side. You know, Galindo played that just like a center fielder and uh, just waited for that ball to come down, and it was a jump ball from there. And he just got in front of the receiver and jumped higher than the receiver and was able to come down with it. 
and you know, and it's not like Galindo's six nine. I mean, he's not a big guy, but he went up and got it at the height of the point there, and nice interception, his second of the night. First and ten for Lockhart, their own fifteen yard line. Got seven thirteen left to go here in the first half. So we'll see if uh, is that Daquan? Yep, Daquan is back. He gets the ball. He cuts it to the outside. He's to the 15, out to the 20, to the 25, cuts it back to the middle. He's still on his feet, gets it out to about the 28-yard line. Nice run by Daquan Ellison. Move the sticks. The monkeys from the Wizard of Oz are around here. <laughs> that was weird. I, I, I got scared because the Wizard of Oz used to freak me out as a kid when those monkeys came, and I, I got flashbacks of the monkeys coming. All right, it's going to be first and 10 at the 28-yard line. They're going to give it to Daquan. No, they're going the other way with Daytron. He's out to the 40, to the 50, down to the 45, to the 40. He's brought down, but I have a feeling it's coming back because there was a flag. There's a, there's a flag right here on the side. We can only hope it's on them. Oh, it is on them, so we will get a big run out of that from Detron Ellison. He's down to the 35-yard line of Kennedy. Detron Ellison hasn't touched it much, but he's ever, he's probably over 100, I would think. <laughs> yeah, he definitely is. He That one went off for uh, 37 yards, and if you count that 64-yarder he had, that puts him way over, uh, you know, just over the 100-yard mark. Well, we're tight formation again. They're going to go out with Jackie on the left side. He's going to throw it. Oh, Moya was trying to make the catch. He dove for it, but was just a little too far. Again, Jackie didn't set his feet and just overthrew him a little bit. But still, they were trying to get Richard Moya the ball on that one. I remember in the first game, Richard Moya pulling, pulling down that awesome diving catch in the end zone. Yeah, that was a fantastic catch that he made. There against uh, Austin Travis, the Rebels. So it's second and ten, tight formation. Oh, they jumped again, yes. or maybe we did. We'll have to see. It was us this time. Yes. Because we had them, Detron. Every time Detron stands up to go in motion, they jump, but we jump first this time. Second and 15, we're just trying to get our running backs a few more yards. That was the reason for that penalty. That'll be second and 15 from the 40-yard line. Man in motion. They're going to hand it up the middle. It's Aldonia yes, to the Aldania. 30, down to the 20, down to the 10. Aldonia, touchdown, 40-yard touchdown run. Jesus Aldonia, 5.50 to go here in the first half. It is now 34 to nothing. Huge run by Jesus Aldonia. He got through the line untouched and continued to go untouched all the way down for a 40-yard touchdown run for a second touchdown of the night. So he has taken a slight lead in offensive player of the game. Which one of our kickers is kicking this time? Like it's Jaimez. Jaimez. It's every other time. <laughs> Jaimez comes in for the extra point try as uh, we get ready for the kick. Snap is back. The hold is down. The kick is up. And they've gone five for five tonight as Lockhart Lions has increased their lead. 35 to nothing over the Rockets. With 5.45 left to go here in the first half. And uh, McKelty, take it away. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and Ken Sports through Bright Magazine. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. All right, we're back. I want to give a shout-out. I don't know if Emilio got this one earlier, but Clyde Wright says, let's go, Lockhart Lions. What a heartbeat. Exactly, and they're showing that heartbeat here tonight. That last corn drive took a minute and 37 seconds off the clock. Why it took that long, I don't know. But uh, it consisted of three plays capped off by a 40-yard touchdown run by Jesus Aldana. And you know what, Scott, by the way things are going, we might have three lines over the 100-yard mark by the time this game's over with. Another shout-out. Tanya Lloyd. 
She's always following us on Lion Country Broadcast Network through Facebook. Wanted to give her a shout out. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Miss Lloyd, for tuning in, and as well as everybody else who's listening to tonight's contest here on the Lion Country Broadcast Network. Another booming kick. It's going to go through the back of the end zone. So that wasn't even fair as Edward Ponce just kicks it through the back of the end zone. 5.45 to go here. First half, 35 to nothing. The Lockhart Lions are on top. And how many interceptions has there been now? There's been uh, four interceptions now. Two by, uh, by Galindo, one by uh, uh, George Renteria, and then, of course, the first interception tonight went to Devin Miller. I mean, Devin Clark, who returned at 90 yards for a touchdown. And, and well, we also recovered our own fumble. So. <laughs> yeah. So. And also, we got a recover a fumble recovery yes, on yes, the kickoff we did. as yes, well. Yes, we did. So. We're looking at five uh, five turnovers already so far here in the first half. So it will be Kennedy at their own 25-yard line. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Sanchez still at quarterback, and he is quite the good one. Hand off to Sandoval. He's going to get around the right side, and he gets stuck. Oh, he breaks free. Finally brought down there by number 12, Juan Ramirez, the junior. Nice run by Sandoval. He gets it out to about the 30-yard line. He's a big, strong kid. Yes, he is, and, you know, he broke the arm tackles of, uh, let's see, where is number 53, Jose Ramon. You know, just a strong run right there by the by the running back and to break free and spin around and pick up a couple of extra yards, close to a, about another two yards and make it a second down and five. Well, you hit it on the head. It was an arm tackle. We got to start hitting like we did the first of the year. Three receivers to the right, two to the left, nobody in the backfield except for Sanchez. He's definitely throwing on this one unless he decides to run. He's in trouble. He throws it. It is caught out of the 40, and he's brought down to the 44. That's number 82, Jack LaRue, a junior receiver. They'll move the sticks. And once again, the quarterback uses his legs to get around the outside and break, you know, escape a tackle, potential sack, and makes a perfect throw to Jack LaRue for a rocket first down. Well, and, you know, a little. I said Michael Vick. Michael Vick threw his share of interceptions, but, I mean, he's keeping plays alive. It's unfortunate, though, our defensive backs are just reading it well right. and stepping in front. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Sandoval in the backfield. Get the snap off. They give it to Sandoval up the middle. They're going to have to wrap him up. He gets a nice hard run. He's out to the midfield stripe. Nice run by Sandoval down the right side. Yeah, Alex Sosa, the first man to make contact with uh, Sandoval. But once again, Sandoval with another tough run was able to pick up about another three more yards after the initial hit from Alex Sosa. So it'll be second and about four from the 49-yard line of Lockhart. Nothing to panic about just yet because normally when they get on our side of the field, a turnover's about to happen. We'll see if that continues. 338 and counting here in the second quarter. 35 to nothing. Lions on top. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Sandoval in the backfield with Sanchez. He'll roll out left. He is a left hander. He's looking to throw. Still looking. Throws it. And it's intercepted by George Renteria for his second interception of the night. Actually, that was Garcia. That was David oh, Garcia. David Garcia. So we're now up to five interceptions. Five interceptions. It's wow. Again, it's not like Kennedy hasn't been moving the football. They just keep turning it over. And I've got to say, after watching Memorial, playing Memorial, and then watching Kennedy, right now I would have to lean towards Kennedy winning that game. He just looked more sound. Yeah. Other than the, the interceptions. Lockhart's been able to get six turnovers so far here in the first half and given up one turnover of them of their own. Two receivers to the left. They're going to hand it off up the middle. That's Daquan Ellison out to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, to the 40, to the 30. Daquan Ellison, one man to beat, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Daquan Ellison, 70-yard touchdown run. He gets to the house. The clock is still running. I didn't think it was supposed to run at this time of the game. No, not yet, but it's getting close to that point. As, ah, there they go. That's Daytron Ell Day yeah, Daquan Ellison with his second carry, his third carry of the game, 
ends up being a 70-yard touchdown run, which is probably going to move them over the 100-yard mark as well, too, in the first half. Oh I got a lot of adding to do here yeah, at yes, halftime. Yes, so. you do. And it's going to be uh, Ponce on yeah, the, the snap point. is back. The hold is down. The kick is up. And the toe poker puts it right through the uprights. And it is now Lockhart Lions 42. San Antonio Rocket zero with 228 left to go here in the first in the first half. And uh Lockhart strikes once again, Scott, and you know it's it's become a defensive battle. Yeah, not only say a defensive battle, but a defensive showcase for the Lockhart Lions. And once Lockhart has the ball, it's becoming an offensive showcase as, you know. I could probably say Lockhart's are probably already gained up close to the 300-yard mark here in the first half alone. Oh, yeah. So, like I said, I got to get my calculator, my abacus, <laughs> uh, brush <laughs> off the calculus. Well, and again, I've, I've kind of gone brain dead because I've, I've, I know she's listening. And we picked up a fan last week and my Aunt Donna from Topeka, Kansas. Yes, that's way, way, way north of us here. And I uh, want to give her a shout out because I know she's listening. Uh, been a pretty exciting game. I thought we made that extra point. Why do we only have 41 points? Uh, scoreboard go up to 42? I, I don't know. <laughs> but I wanted to give her a shout out. Of course, the old parents, Clarence and Roberta. There it is. There we they go. Heard, they heard us. 42 to nothing. Clock is already moving. I guess we have hit that point in the game. James kicks it off. He doesn't kick quite as far. The ball is received at the 10. It's out to the 15. He cuts it back up to the 20, and he will be brought down at about the 26-yard line. And it looked like that one was San Miguel who brought it out. 27-yard lines where they'll mark him, and he'll have first and 10. So we were down 42 to nothing last week at halftime, and then one in the second half. Tonight we're ahead 42 to nothing to half. Well, we're not even there yet. <laughs> With 2.10 left to go here in the first half, be sure to tune in and listen to the Johnny and Sons Paint and Body Shop halftime show as uh, we bring you the roaring brand of the Lockhart Lions here at the halftime performance. They'll be performing first, which gives me enough time to use my calculus. Well, I'm also looking for our interview guy. I don't see him making his way up here just yet, but we have an interview that we're supposed to have tonight. Uh, they did run the ball with Sanchez. He'll take it out to about... The 34-yard line, but we have a hopefully a special interview going on tonight, but I haven't seen him make his way up here yet. And that last scoring drive for the Lockhart Lions took one play, 15 seconds off the clock, and it was capped off by a 70-yard touchdown run by Daquan Ellison. Want to give a shout-out to Randy Fry, the Rock and Rev, for the QA tonight. Two receivers to each side. Sandoval's going to run with it. Probably a good call as he's been running over the top of us. He gets it out to about the 42-yard line, and they will move the sticks. And with all the interceptions, I would probably just keep giving him the yeah, ball. Yeah, you know what? And he's had success running the ball, so Sandoval's doing an excellent job picking his spots. And not just that, you know, as soon as he's made contact with the Lions, defensive players, He's able to push forward and get a couple extra yards, so tough running by Sandoval. So we have two receivers to the right, two to the left. Sanchez in the backfield with Sandoval. He's going to get – no, he's going to fake it. Sanchez holds on to it. He's being chased down. Nice cutback move. He's still on his feet. Oh, he got hit hard that time. Number 51 got on top of him. That was De La Cruz, Elias De La Cruz with a nice tackle. It's second and nine. Yes, great footwork once again by Sanchez, you know, but just wasn't enough to get to get past uh, Elias De La Cruz. He got past him one time by juking him out, but Elias was able to continue pursuit <laughs> and was able to make the tackle after uh, Sanchez picks up three yards on the run. Probably the last play of the first half, twin receivers to each side. We're down to 10 seconds to go here in the first half. Sandoval's on the right side of the quarterback. Sanchez gets the snap. He's looking. He's going to throw it. It's complete. It's down to the 45. There's a fumble, and Lockhart gets the ball again. This is almost not even fair right now. As they completed the pass to Carrillo, and he fumbles, Lockhart picked it up, but that's the end of your first half. Yet another turnover. So we'll go to halftime where the Lockhart Lions lead 42 to nothing here in San Antonio.
Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. Johnny & Sons Pain Body has been Lockhart's premier collision repair and auto body shop since 1967. Certified iCar Standard, the highest ranking in the collision industry. For all your collision needs, come by and see Johnny & Sons 400 Blackjack in Lockhart. Johnny & Sons Pain Body, we won't steer you wrong. At Edgewood Veterans Memorial Stadium as we get set to continue our Johnny & Sons Paint and Body Shop Halftime show as we bring you the Roaring Lockhart Lion Band. So uh, as they're getting ready to get set up, we'll go ahead and turn off our mics, turn up the crowd mic, so you can listen to the sweet sounds of your Lockhart Lion Roaring Band here on the Johnny and Sons Peyton and Body Shop Halftime Show. And uh, we'll be back after the Lions, uh, Lion Band plays, and we'll get to you with some halftime stats. Please, welcome to the field in the 2018-2019 Lockhart High School Lionettes. Under the direction of Miss Taylor Seymour, the Lionettes are led onto the field by Captain Alexia Bright, Co-Captain Elena Davila, Junior Lieutenant Precious Garcia, Junior Lieutenant Brianna Gonzalez, Social Officer Chelsea Rodriguez, Social Officer Bella Herman. This week, the Lionettes will be performing a palm routine to hand clap.
Ladies and gentlemen, and now, entering the field is the pride of Lockhart, the 2018 Roaring Lion Band. The UIL Sweepstakes award-winning Roaring Lion Band is led onto the field by drum majors Rosella Serrano and Tabitha Harris. Tonight, the Roaring Lion Band is proud to present its 2018 UIL contest show, The Sound of Color, featuring Painted Black from the Rolling Stones, Mozart's Eine Kleine Nacht music, Carol Britton Chambers, One of Many, Writings on the Wall from the James Bond movie, Spectre, Stravinsky's Firebird, and Carol Britton Chambers' Wildfire. The saxophone solos are performed by Jaime Sosa, with musical arrangements by Carol Britton Chambers, percussion by Colin Pagel, guard design by Jeffrey Sperling, and visual design by Luke Gall, we give you the sound of color.
And we are back at, here at the Johnny and Sons Paint and Body Shop halftime show as you just finished listening to the Lockhart Lion Roaring Band. And, uh, you know, we got a very special guest up here in the booth with us for tonight's halftime show. And uh, before we get to the stats, we'll go and interview this gentleman. And, you know, he's been around. He's a... Uh, He's pretty much like a legend in Lockhart as well, such as uh, Scott Hippenstill. And uh, for those of y'all that know this guy and know him, most of y'all in my age group, around the 46, 45-year-old age group, will recognize him from one famous statement that he always said is, if you answered to him and you said, huh, his response to you was, do I look like your daddy boy? Get down and give me 25. So with that, I want to welcome uh, Coach Jimmy De La Cruz to the to the booth tonight. And how you doing, Coach? Fine, fine. Thank fine. you for having me. Oh, thank you for being uh, here, Coach. You know, you know, you've been in the school system for over forty years, and uh, a lot of that time was spent at Lockhart High School. Talk about your experience there. Is uh, I mean, you were you were the athletic director or the athletic trainer under so many coaches, and uh, talk about that experience that you that you've had. Well, you know, everybody has a uh, uh, different philosophy, and they're all going to set the world on fire and win st state championships. And uh, their goals uh, sometimes came short, obviously. But uh, uh, there were some outstanding uh, gentlemen that came through and uh, really built the district, the, the athletic department up. And then there were others that were not as successful. Definitely. And I, we noticed that, the, you know, in the last few years before Herman came aboard, this is Her Coach Herman's sixth year, you know, Lockhart had a lot of coaches that were here just for a stepping stool for another job. So they were here for maybe a year, two years, three years tops, and then they were gone. You know, during that time frame while you were as you were working as athletic trader, what kind of, uh, you know, what, what did it do to the football program during all this time? Well, uh, it uh, kind of sort of messed it up because uh, – for example, if uh, an individual came in, a head coach, and uh, you, the student, was a freshman, by the time he got to a senior, he might be on his third head coach. And uh, that was a concern that uh, the people in the community had, that uh, they're just turnovers. Like you said, they were here for two years, and they they hooked it. Yes, definitely. It's never a good thing for that to happen, but... You know, the, pro the Lockhart program has always strived not just for a winning tradition because Lockhart's always, you know, they've had a problem with that with, you know, a lot of, you know, not too many winning, se winning seasons. But there's one thing that Lockhart always had was heart and determination. You know, and, and when it comes from athletic trainers as yourself that, that's been there for years, you've always been there to be able to help boost the, you know, boost the morale of the team, you know, and stuck, stick with them, whereas most coaches would have just gone and left them. Yeah. So it, during your time here at, at, at Lockhart High School, is there a certain player that you could pinpoint and say that this was the best player that you've seen in the in your time here at Lockhart High School? Gosh, dog, that's uh, uh, difficult to say uh, because um, all these young men uh, at the time, you know, had different talents uh, uh, from their positions. Uh, etc um but i mean you know you can say who was the fastest who was the strongest who was the quickest uh who had the most tackles who had the uh, most uh, yardage in a single year so you know to equate who's the best one that's that's a tough question it for is. me okay so we'll just say that every every uh, player that you came across has a, has their own unique talent to, to set themselves apart. And they all contributed to that uh, offensive or defensive scheme in their own way. Yes. And uh, as far as, uh, you know, when I first came across you, it was at the intermediate, you know, where it was fourth, Correct. fifth, and sixth grade. You know, talk about your time there. And as you slowly moved up into high school, which you were my PE teacher at that time. So. Correct. Uh, Charles Red, Mr. Red, hired me. And I was at San Marcos, and um, he uh, wanted a PE program, so we try to give him a, a program. I, tr I try to give give the school a program, and uh, like the fourth graders, I kind of treated them like babies, and they were, you know, young kiddos. Fifth graders, we took a stepped up a notch, 
and uh, made it a little bit, try to te teach team skills. And then when you got to the sixth grade, I always uh, preached, uh, you got to pass if you want to participate in the different tournaments we had. And you've got to, uh, you know, you got to know the rules of the, of the different sports. Yes. And like the girls, I make the girls learn some of the football rules, just like the boys. And then at the same time, I make the boys learn some of the volleyball rules, just as the girls did. Yes, definitely. Because, I mean, you got to grow into the sports, no matter what sport yeah. it is. And he did an amazing job doing that. And uh, I think Scott might yes, have something. Yes, I actually do. It is from the man. Rock and Rev wants me to say hello from him and his son Jesse to you, Randy Fry. Oh, and son Jesse, <laughs> the Rock and Rev. Yeah, we Jesse. call him the Rock and Rev. Yes, uh, they, they say hello to you. Well, that's great. Uh, he uh, um, Jesse was a special young man and a hard worker, and he enjoyed. Uh, he was one of my student trainers, and he enjoyed doing what he what he uh, did. And the uh, players had a lot of respect for him. So uh, there was uh, the camaraderie there was good for him, well, as yeah. well as the, stu the yeah. players. Well, the good thing about him, ha you know, I have him as a neighbor. I mean, football throw away. Uh, I know I'm safe there because, you know, nobody's going to be messing with him and his neighborhood. So <laughs> I know that I'm safe because he lives several, you know, it's a block down the road. So it's nice having him in my neighborhood. So go ahead yeah. and ask your question. Definitely. Let me go ahead and go through some uh, distinguished awards that you've picked up. You know, you were uh, the athletic trainer for the 23rd AAU National Junior Olympic Games in San Antonio in 89. Uh, Southwest Texas distingu distinguished <laughs> alumni. Alumnus Award in Athletic Training in 92. You were the athletic trainer for the Texas High School Coaches Association Football All-Star Game in 98. That was a big uh, honor yes. because uh, you're asked to, to do that. Yes. And T.J. Uh, uh, Mills from Sealy, uh, he and his staff were voted to coach the South All-Stars, and uh, they didn't have a trainer. And they had, uh, in two years, they had played five uh, playoff games in Lockhart. So... Uh, I, we knew each other, so when he needed a trainer, uh, he asked me. That was a big honor for me. That's a, that's outstanding. And then there's the SWATA John Harvey Humanitarian Award in 2004, the NADA 25-year award recipient, and also you were on the front cover issue of the American Football Monthly magazine in October of 2000 of the sports medicine injuries. And then to top it off, in 2012, you were inducted into the Alamo Area Athletic Trainers Association Hall of Fame. Now, talk about that right there. Well, that was yeah. that was a big honor. Um, uh, this is the uh, AAA TA is an organization that promotes athletic trainers, training in the San Antonio area. And, uh, you know, you've got uh, San Antonio uh, teams that uh, are individuals that have uh, come from great programs. They have great facilities. They have great modalities of phys, um, physical um, rehab equipment. And, uh, you know, you're talking about we had to have, you know, we had the minimum. But at any rate, uh, uh, it, it was a big honor. And that was done at uh, Rosenberg uh, Room at the uh, uh, Incarnate Word College in yeah. downtown. And uh, it was a, a big, um, big honor. Yes, definitely. Anything that has Hall of Fame attached to it, you <laughs> know, it's a huge accomplishment. You know, and uh, you definitely earned that honor to to get into the all, to the Hall of Fame. Now we go back. Uh, I see here after you uh, graduated from high school, you enlisted into the United States Navy, serving two tours in Vietnam in '66 and '68. Talk about that experience, uh, if if you could, if you would. Well, uh, you know, when uh, you're coming from a little town like Quero, you're green as a tin horn, and uh, you don't didn't know what to expect. And uh, we were on a destroyer guided missile, DDG, home ported out of Pearl, and uh, 66 was not bad. Uh, did a lot of naval gunfire support for uh, two corps around uh, Natrang to Da Nang, but in uh, 68. That's when the Ted Offensive started, and it was ugly. And uh, for us, our ship, we were being called on almost like uh, around the clock. And uh, my division was uh, almost no sleep. Yes. And uh, 
we were glad to get out of there in in uh, 68 and uh you know but i also felt sorry for the grunts that were inland that were um you know they suffered way more yes. worse than uh, what we did so and uh you also married your uh, host, uh, Josie Cavazos. It was not my high school sweetheart. Yeah, not your high school sweetheart, <laughs> but you, you married Josie Cavazos and from, from Lockhart. Lockhart. Yes. And uh, you've had three children, Christina, Lori, and Eric, and you, you have six grandchildren. Correct. And I'm catching sure. up to you. I got four grandchildren myself. So well, you're, you're <laughs> moving fast. And then but, another reason I'm here is uh, because uh, – uh, Brandon, Lori, and Brandon, um, uh, they're, um, they've got Alex Thompson living with them. He, mm-hmm. Alex and uh, uh, grandson Ryan, they're juniors. And uh, Alex's uh, parents moved to uh, the Pflugerville area. Yes. And he didn't want to go. So they did the paperwork with the school and the UIL and uh, got him to, to stay. Well, that's good. It, you know, it's, it's always great to be helping out. You know, young gentlemen, or you know, young young adults that uh, that really need help, and uh, it's it's great what they're doing to give this this young man an opportunity to play football and to be successful. So you know, big big props mm-hmm. to them. Well, one thing I was going to add there is, it's not just him; it's the entire family because you've got Lori running the booster club. And she still hasn't given me my free shirts. I keep asking her <laughs> all the time, but she won't do it. Of course, Brandon was like a right-hand man for me when coaching the boys in basketball in the off season. He was always there helping, running the clock, doing whatever he could do. And I appreciate Brandon a lot. As a matter of fact, Brandon got all of this set up, and I was glad he did yeah. because I'm new here. I had no idea all the things he had done. Yeah. I knew he was in pictures. <laughs> but yeah. I didn't know what he had done. So yeah. this is all informative to me. This is awesome. I love yeah. – and when he gave me this information, I peeked at it, and I thought, holy cow. Yeah. So I am I sit here in amazement. Yeah. And, that, I mean, you th- and also throw in there, we're related. So through my stepdad, Tommy Joe Navarro. But, you know, we've been around together so long, you know, it, it's still found me regardless of what <laughs> – blood or not. Correct. But, uh, all right, Coach, uh, one last question before we let you go and we get to the second half of tonight's contest. Is there anybody that you would like to give a shout-out to or, uh, you know, say hi to or anything? Well, it's just like the the Reverend Fry. Uh, that was a big surprise. Uh, hoping hoping that uh, anybody listening out there, uh, uh, y'all are, hope y'all are doing good, well, and uh, as we get closer to the uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas seasons that uh, – uh, your families are blessed. Yes, thank you once again, Coach, and uh, great words to end tonight's uh, interview. And uh, like I said, I want to give give you thanks for what you did as a PE teacher in sixth grade and all the way up until when I was a senior <laughs> in high school. You know, it was always great. It was one of the best classes that I always look forward to going to. You Just know, even, the, even if I had to drop and do 25 every now and then, but <laughs> – it was always uh, a treat to go to your uh, class. Just a quick note. It's just like uh, some of the students, uh, we came in through the intermediate, and then w- which is Navarro now. Yeah. And then uh, they went to high school, and there I was. Yeah. And it's <laughs> like Mr. Red was in the same situation. <laughs> I'll let y'all get going. Y'all got a job to do. All right. Thank y'all very much. Right. I appreciate thank it. You we coming, appreciate coach. you coming up here. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Thank, thank you, you, Coach. Oh, you too. All right, as we get ready for the second half kickoff, let me give you a couple of quick stats for the first half. Lockhart totaled 328 yards of total offense, but if you want to hear the surprise factor, 318 of those came on the ground. As uh, Daytron Ellison led the way with four rushes for 133 yards, Daquan, who had three carries in the second in the second quarter alone, for 106 yards and one touchdown, Jesus Adania, three carries for 72 yards. And two touchdowns, and we got the baby bull, Jordan Garcia, for one carry on seven, for seven yards. And, Scott, you know, I kind of mentioned before the halftime came along that we could be looking at 300 yards in the first half, and that's exactly what we're seeing. Well, they're kicking off to us, and it's going to be Daquan Ellison from the 15. He's out to the 20, to the 25. He's up to the 30, to the 35, still on his feet. He gets pushed out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Nice return by Daquan Ellison. 
Well, you know, when you talked about the baby bull, one carry seven yards, he should be embarrassed. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> how dare you average seven <laughs> yards a carry? Uh, definitely, you know, it's you know. It, oh, it, hopefully they'll fix that stat here in the second half. Well, you know, it's just amazing that our line has done well enough job that these guys are just getting monster yards so far. Yes, definitely. And, you know, and the speed has helped a lot as, as you know, Daquan <coughs> and Daytron have gotten to the open field and has really turned on the Jets. And Hessel Zadania still with this power running, able to get pick up huge yards as they're, well. They're going to throw it out to Daytron. He's out to the 45. He's going to get across midfield. A nice quick pass by Jackie Ellis. Hang on. Oh, okay. I thought we had an injury there for a minute. I was a little worried. Jackie Edwards swings out a pass there to Ellison, and Ellison gets it out to the 45 on Kennedy. That was quick, a quick strike, but I thought we had a guy go down. I was getting a little concerned. Yeah. It, was a, it was a backwards pass, so that's going to count for a 12-yard run for a Daytron Ellison. So they're going to go tight formation, first and 10 at the 45-yard line. 42 to nothing. Locker. Oh, flags already. Look at that. We're going to have a uh, four false start on the offense. As I eat some of this cake. Yeah, we were, you know, again, it is my birthday, I guess, and they were nice enough to bring us down about 400 pounds of cake. So we have cake to eat for the entire town of Lockhart right here. So it'll be first and 10. Oh, I checked that first and 15 from the 50-yard yeah. line. And this is just basically the guys jump off sides to give their running backs a little bit more yards to work with when they run the ball. Tight formation. They're going to roll out throwing again. He's looking. Over the middle, trying to go to Spencer Nelson. Overthrew him pretty badly there, and it's incomplete. Now they're trying to get everybody involved in the game. I'd like to see one go to Richard Moya here pretty quick. Yes, and that's another one of those plays where Jackie Edwards set his feet but just put a little bit too much in it and too much air over, under it and uh, just overthrew his intended receiver. Second and 15, tight formation. <laughs> Daytron Ellison around the left side. He's to the 45, to the 40. He's to the 30. He's to the 20. He's got one man to beat. He dives for the end zone. Touchdown. Daytron Ellison, 45-yard touchdown run. That's going to be a 50-yard touchdown run. Oh, it run. is a 50. I yep. forgot. 50-yard touchdown run. That makes it um, 48 to nothing here with 9.48 to go in the third quarter. So the yards keep piling up. Looks like uh, Jaimez is going to be coming say, in. To it's ex his turn. The extra point. It's his turn. <laughs> <laughs> As we await the snap, Alex Sosa is the holder. The snap is back. The hold is down. The kick is up. And it is good. So with that extra point try, it is now Lockhart Lions 49, San Antonio Rockets Zero with 9.13 left to go, and we're at the point where the clock is going to be a continuous clock from here on out for the rest of the ball game. And, you know, Scott, with that last run by uh, Daytron, Daquan Ellison, you know, that puts him at 156 yards on four carries <coughs> with two touchdowns. And, uh, the like you said, the stats just keep going up, and, you know, you got to give it up to the offensive linemen once again as they're doing an amazing job. Yeah, uh, Tanya Lloyd just put on Facebook, love Coach Dela Cruz. He coached with my dad in LHS. Once a lion, always a lion. And again, Miss Lloyd is always talking to us in the, in the Lion Country Broadcast Network. Yes, and, you know, her husband, Scott Lloyd, is also a teacher he was a teacher at the Pride School that my daughter went to. And uh, when my daughter passed, you know, Scott Lloyd was the last teacher she had. So I asked him if he could come and speak at her uh, at her funeral. And he did so, and he had some very nice things to say. And, he, you know, it was uh, it was felt from the heart. And, uh, you know, I've, we've always had a connection with the Lloyds, with uh, Miss Lloyd and then Scott Lloyd. And, you know, it's, it's, they're, great, great, uh, they're a great couple. The ball bounces back. It is brought up by Butler. Butler's going to fake the handoff again. He's out to the 15, to the 20, to the 25, to the 30. He's still on his feet. Got some room. He's to the 40, out to the 45, to the 50, where he is brought out of bounds by Cortland Zambrano. Huge run from the on the return. Great job by the return man. 
to pick his spot and just uh, be patient with this run. And it just showed he picked up a huge, huge chunk of yards on the opening on the kickoff. I'm a little surprised they don't get that kid the ball more often. He is quick. 49 to nothing, as he said, running clock, 7.15 and counting. It is first and 10 at the 48-yard line of Lockhart. Again, as if the first half continues to go, this is about the time they start looking at a turnover. Two receivers to the right, to the left. Sanchez is in the backfield. Sandoval back there. He gets the ball up the middle. Running hard up the middle across the 45 down to about the 43-yard line. Good run. Hey, you know what? The offensive line has you – know, they're not making blocks, but they're holding their block long enough. But at the same time, Sandoval is getting to the line of scrimmage and getting hit, but still pushing through – you know, pushing forward to pick up the extra yardage. And he got hit right at the line of scrimmage and picked up seven yards or six yards on that run. Well, and he's just a sophomore. He's a big kid. So there's going to be second and four. They're down to the 42-yard line of Lockhart. Just looking out there, it looks like we still have our main squad on the field. Two receivers to each side, Sanchez in the backfield. Sandoval again, up the middle. He gets hit hard and stuck, and look who's there, Elijah Sanchez with a bunch of other guys. And Eddie Tukar, yep. we're, first time we're calling his name tonight. <laughs> I'll bet you they're running away from old Eddie. <laughs> I mean, like we said, he's been starting middle linebacker or linebacker for us since about sixth grade. So, um, Tukar usually gets his name called on almost every play. Yeah. I would have to say they're probably trying to stay away from him. Yeah. You know what? Another tough run, even though he didn't gain any yards, but Sa Sandoval got hit in the backfield, was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Another tough run for Sandoval. Two receivers each side. Sanchez in the backfield. Sandoval back there with him. They're going to look to throw. And they are going to come. Oh, my Almost God. picked Alex up. Alex Thompson just about had a pick six. He's in and out of his hands. I'm pretty sure he took his eyes off the ball at the last second and I, saw nothing but yeah. green dirt with the gray end zone with Kennedy well, tattooed all over it. Coach Curry is uh, cheering him on, though, because Curry runs half the field like these kids do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fourth down and about four. You know they're probably going to be going for it the rest yeah. of the way. I'm pretty sure it, had he have intercepted that ball, Coach Curry would have had a foot race with them all the way to the goal line. Yeah, Curry is something He's else. very animated. Oh, and yes. it, You know, really pumps up the, the, the Lockhart Lions. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Sanchez going to look to throw. Fourth down, two car coming. A screen pass out here to Sandoval, who's going to well easily played. get the first down. Oh, what a hit. Sandoval gets pulled down from behind. Is Ismail Duncan made the catch from behind. But what a block to free him up. First and goal at the three-yard line. That was one of the best blocks I think I've seen all year. Great block, and it also sprung him to get more yarders down the field all the way down to the three-yard line before he's caught from behind. Sandoval don't need any help, but he got some big help in that one. Yeah. Now, if Kennedy was smart on here, they'd give the ball to Sandoval once again. I, I, I think I'd give it to him the rest of the game. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> he is something else. He runs hard. 350 and counting. Nope, they're going to go with Sanchez. And he's tackled by two car. And who was the other one? Was that Renteria? I cannot see the number. Sanchez comes up limping once again. Yeah, he's had a rough night. Again, I, I, and I, I'm sure that he's kind of the go-to guy down in that situation, but, my gosh, we haven't been able to stop Sandoval at all. It's almost like watching Medina Valley again. Yes. So it's second and goal from the three-yard line. Three minutes, 15 seconds to go here in the third quarter. It's 49 to nothing. The Lockhart Lions are on top. And, you know, most video games is what our yardage average per game is. It's just crazy, yeah. the stats we're putting up. Looks like Kennedy's going to call a timeout. Maybe to give Sanchez a little time to, to recover. So, I guess while they take a timeout, we could take a timeout too and take it away, McKelton. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports, the Bright Magazine. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. 
They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy or trade. Now you know the best of the story. All right, we're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium, the home away from Lockhart for your Lockhart Lions. We've had a good run of things here as we've outscored our opponents 90 to nothing in the two games we've been here. But that's about to change, I have a feeling, because Sandoval with a great run has them down at the three-yard line. Sanchez is a tough kid because he's back out there. Yeah, you can still see that he's hobbling a little bit, but, you know, he's not going to want to take himself out of this ball game for nothing. I, They're going to go. I cannot even imagine Sandoval not getting the ball here. Nope, they they didn't give it to him, and they didn't score. Actually, they lost a yard, too. I would be giving that to number 45 every touch that close to the goal line. You've got to score here. Third and goal from the four. Yeah, you definitely you, you're gonna have to go for it, or if anything, <coughs> kick three, kick kick a field goal for three points, put some points on the board. I just honestly, I don't think we can stop Sandoval from scoring if they go two plays with him right here. We'll see who gets it. Nope, they're gonna throw. He's gonna run possibly. No, he's in trouble. He's trying to get out of it. He throws it. It's caught. It's Sandoval, and he's gonna push his way. But he does not get in. He gets about a yard, maybe two on the catch. You know, great play by Sanchez being hobbled already by an injury that he got in the first quarter. You can see him still limping a little bit, but he was able to get out of get out of deep trouble and make the pass to Sandoval. Fortunately, the Lockhart Lions were there to wrap him up as Sandoval was wide open. Yes. But uh, a host of Lions were able to get there and make the tackle. Now, this would be disheartening for the Rockets if they don't score and huge for the Lions if they don't score. Sandoval in the backfield. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. They're going to look to throw. They're looking. They throw to Sandoval. He catches it, and it's fumbled. And it's still on the ground. Lockhart has it. They're going to run the other way with it. And it is number 44, Eddie Tukar. He's to the 40. Eddie Tukar to the other 40. To Wait, the 30. Back. To the 20. Eddie Tukar is going to go 98 yards for a touchdown. Talk about a change. Oh, my gosh. Flash. So a fumble. Eddie Tukar picks it up and goes 98 yards. For the touchdown. And you know what? And a guy that we just mentioned a while ago, we haven't called his name out up until halfway through the third quarter. And here he comes, picks up the fumble, and scurred, and scampers down the field 98 yards for a touchdown. You know, what a, what a way to get his number called. <laughs> Holy cow. And now, you know, you had Devin Clark is possibly defensive player of the game with his 90-yard touchdown. Mm -hmm. Now you got a 98-yard fumble recovery. That's got to be, what, the seventh or eighth turnover of the game? That's the eighth turnover of the game. Jeez Louise. And the kick by Ponce is good, making it 56 to nothing, and that's going to end your third quarter. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go to a commercial break. 56 nothing, Lockhart Lions after – and Eddie Tukar, 98-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown. Take it away, McKelty. You're listening to Lions Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports through Bite Magazine. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512-668-4163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. All right, we're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium where I think Lockhart should play the rest of their football games as they are up 56 to nothing. And in two games that we've been here, we have outscored our opponents 97 to nothing. And it looked like we were going to get scored on 
and just craziness, yeah. turnovers all over the place. Yeah, and you mentioned it was fourth down three from, you know, fourth down and three. Actually, it was fourth down and go to go from the three. And you mentioned it right before this play took place that it was either going to be good for the, for the Rockets if they scored or it was going to be bad if they don't. And it was going to be good for the defense if they kept them out of the end zone. And, you know, fumble recovery, 98 yards, Lions touchdown. Well, we're going to have Hamez kick it off, and he doesn't kick it quite as far, so we will see a return here, maybe, and they will get it. They're going to get it at the 10-yard line. He cuts it back to the 15. He gets dropped down about the 15-yard line right there. That was San Miguel, I believe, with the return. So not good field position. No, you know it looked like San Miguel was waiting for that football to go out of bounds. Unfortunately, it stayed in bounds, and uh, he had to pick it up and run with it. Of course, because if it's it's a live ball, but because he waited for it to go out of bounds and it didn't, the special teams for the Lockhart Lions was able to get deep in there. That that is right there is funny. Yeah. I love this scoreboard. <laughs> We, we need this at our house. That's one of my favorite lines in a football movie right there. <laughs> Give me the ball. Give me the ball. I'll get you the ball. I got I, the ball. I love that movie. <laughs> All right. We are back to playing football. Again, the stats are going to be ungodly. It's like playing a game on Sega or something like that. These stats are crazy. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Sanchez has a man in motion. Going to give it to Sandoval like they should have when they were on the three-yard line. And he's going to get it out to about the 18-yard line. Again, I don't understand it. Sandoval right there picks up four yards. All they had to do is give him the ball three times. He would have scored a touchdown. Any one of the – uh-oh, we have a flag. Please tell me we didn't do something. As we await the penalty, it looked like the referee's address in the offense side, dead ball, unsportsmanlike – so it will on be on the them. Offense. Yes. So It'll they're going to be way back in ter their. But it was going to be half the distance from the to the goal line at the 17. It's going to put them right around the eight yard line. Well, I'm going to go back again because I absolutely love this stadium. If you can ever come here to watch a football game, the scoreboard itself is worth the admission. Everything that goes on <laughs> is the coin flips. I, I love it here. I absolutely And we're actually it. in the same booth as the guys that are running it, so. So we will have second. Should, dare, dare we go there? Uh, I, no. Second in a long yeah, ways from the nine-yard <laughs> yard line. 10-15 <laughs> to go in the ball game. 56 to nothing Lockhart. Let's not two, get too extreme. Yes, two receivers <laughs> to the right, one to the left, one in motion. Sanchez going to give it to Sandoval. He's going to find a room on the right side. And he's brought down. Tough run. Good run, though. And I'm trying to see, was that Garcia with the tackle? It sure looked like it. Yeah, it was David Garcia. Garcia. And, uh, once again, number 70, who's been getting a lot Jonathan of. Jonathan uh, Trejo. Who's been getting in there a lot, making the tackle as well. But seriously, it's this has just been the weirdest game I think I've ever been involved in. Third and about seven. The ball is at the. 17 yard, 18 yard line. It's just, again, it's a good thing the clock is running nonstop. One, we'll get out of here earlier. And two, this is getting ugly. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. They're going to roll out left. He's going to throw. He hits his receiver. He's going to get up to about the 26 yard line, still on his feet, gets knocked out of bounds. Again, number 32, David Garcia finishes him off with some help over there. Not, first to yeah, 10. not before San Antonio, the Rockets were able to pick up another first down on a great pass. The receiver was wide open, and Sanchez just put it right there in the gut. Uh, the receiver <coughs> was able to pick up yards for a first down. Yes, first and 10, 27-yard line. Um, hopefully the, the Rockets can put a good drive to just kill a lot of the clock here. Two receivers to the left, to the to the right, Sanchez in the backfield, Sandoval with him. They're going to give it to Sandoval. He's going to cut it right back up the middle of the field. He, he gets hit right up in the oh, great baby tackle. bowl, makes yeah. a great tackle. Jordan Garcia, great hit. Yeah, the baby bull hasn't been able to uh, 
to make his presence known on the offensive side of the ball, but on the defensive side, he made his presence felt on that tackle as he was able to catch uh, Sandoval on a one-on-one and make, drop him for uh, after Sandoval picked up three yards on the game. Well, and, you know, you hit it on the head earlier in the year and lately here. The sophomore class has done a great job for us this year. They definitely have. It's going to be exciting to see them in the next couple of years. One receiver to the left, two to the right. They're going to roll out right. He's going to throw on his back foot, and the ball's dropped. Under, just underthrew him a little bit as the receiver was had to bend over to get the ball and just wasn't able to grab, <laughs> grab the football and bring it in. Dylan Dominguez is who he's trying to get it to. Third and nine, we'll call it. 7.22 and counting to go here in the ballgame. 56 to nothing. The Lockhart Lions are on top. Just big play after big play. I think we have a total of eight turnovers right now for Kennedy. We have one, I think. Yeah, we have one. It was on the Daquan Ellison run on his first carry. Could have been a touchdown. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So two receivers to the left, one coming in motion. It's going to make two on the right now. They're going to roll out right. Uh, Sanchez throws, and it's intercepted again. The ninth turnover. This one's number 27, and that is Julian Rodriguez Sr. His first game back, back, McKelty tells us, and he gets an interception. 635 and counting. That's going to be the sixth interception for the Lockhart line defense. Good great. And the ninth th- turnover of the game. In fantasy football, how many points is that? That's oh, ungodly. Man, that's, yeah, that's they I mean they won the game for you by themselves, exactly. the defense has. And they've returned what? Two touchdowns. Two touchdowns. So they will go tight formation. Jackie is under center. Edwards. Gives it up to number 42, a nice hard run there. Darius Spruill with the carry. He's going to get a good carry of about six, maybe seven yards on it. He doesn't carry the ball much, but he ran it hard there. 550 and counting. This will probably be just run the ball and let this clock run out. As we have uh, Spencer Nelson split out to the right with Daquan Ellison. Now he's tight. They're looking for Spencer, and he makes the catch. Spencer Nelson. Not only is he making a great catch there from Jackie Edwards, but he's a great goalkeeper as well for the varsity soccer team. Picks up the first down. Great slant pass. That definitely is. And uh, once again, Jackie Edwards was right there, set his feet, and made a nice throw. So first and 10 from the 29-yard line. They're still moving the ball, tight formation. They're going to give it to, I don't know who that was, Spruill. Spruill on the carry. once again on the carry. About five-yard gain, maybe six. I'm going to call it five. 440 and counting in the ball game. 56 to nothing. The Lockhart Lions are on top. Cortland Zambrano has already scored a touchdown tonight. Split out left. They're going to give the ball to Daquan Ellison, who's running up the middle. He is going to go the distance. Daquan Ellison goes 24 yards untouched up the middle for a touchdown, making it 62 to nothing, your Lockhart Lions. Another huge run by Daquan Ellison. He's going to put him up for a good total. And, you know, right now with three touchdowns, and he'll be he's probably going to be the front runner for offensive player of the game. But, I mean, golly, we could choose between a whole group, and it's going to be a tough decision to make regardless. It would, might, might be a flip the coin kind of thing. <laughs> Maybe we could get the, the scoreboard, the scoreboard yes. guy to They'll give tell us, us a what flip. It is. And to snap his back to hold us down and kick us up. And once again, it's an extra point is good. So with that extra point, now brings the total. Lockhart Lions 63, San Antonio Rocket 0 with 3.36 left to go on a running clock. And uh, Scott, it's, it's I guess we can go and take one more break. And uh, by that time, we should be ready to end the game tonight. Okay. 
McKelton, take it away. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports Food White Magazine. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. Back. We're here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium. I want to give a shout out to Brandon Butler out there. His wife, Lori Butler, still, I'm waiting on those free shirts. I'm not really sure what the holdup is here, Lori, but, you know, extra husky. Don't forget. We're killing time here. 237 and counting. 63 to nothing. The Lions are on top. This is probably going to be the last drive of the game. And, and again, you can't really say, well, Lockhart's trying to run a score up. No, they're not. They ran a play right up the middle, and the guy went untouched for 24 yards. It's not running the score up if you don't tackle a guy running straight up the middle of the field. Exactly. And, you know, it's – Ponce kicks the ball, a line drive. Here's that fast, speedy guy again. He's ran around the 20 to the 25 to the 30. They may want to give him the ball more often. Out to the 33, James Butler, senior. I don't know. Again, between him and Sandoval, they could have the speed and power and do some damage with those two kids. Yes, definitely. And it's, you know, it, it's been defi definitely a night where Lockhart has been able to uh, control the entire ball game, no matter which side of the football they're at, offense or defense. And – you know, as we saw in that fumble return for 98 yards by 82 car, you know, it doesn't matter what side of the field they're on either. Lockhart has just been that. Had they been, they've been able to execute their day, game plan to a perfect T on offense and defense. So we have a, two receivers to the right, one to the left. You know they'll be handing it off here. A nice run up the middle. Oh, but he's going to get thrown down from behind. Again, number 27 on the tackle, Julian Rodriguez. Again, McKelty says that's his first game back from being out for a while, and he's had an interception, and now he's getting some nice tackles out there. We're under a minute. I can't imagine, but maybe one more play. I'm not even sure if I'd be in too hurry to run that one more play, but I guess you have to at this point. Yeah, because I think a penalty would stop the clock. We have been home we've been a homecoming team. I think for four of our games this year, we were homecoming again tonight. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. They're going to give it to Sandoval. He spin moves, and he gets stacked up, and he gets back to maybe the 35-yard line, 24 seconds and counting. That's probably going to do it. I would think we would line it up and shake some hands at this point. Uh, the play clock is off, so... Looks like uh, San yep. Antonio Kennedy is just yep. going to let the clock They're run out. We're under 10 seconds now. so I'm, I'm excited to see if you can figure out with your calculator what we average per carry tonight. That is the end of the ball game. Your Lockhart Lions, 63. Kennedy Rockets, 0. We're going to let McKelty take us to a commercial break, and we'll come back for your offensive and defensive players of the game. You're listening to Lion Country Broadcast Network and KMAX Sports Food Bite Magazine. Dr. Peterson and his staff at Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic are here to serve you. We've been voted best chiropractor and best chiropractor's office for five years running. Are you bothered by headaches, back pain, or neck pain? Call Chisholm Trail Clinic of Chiropractic at 512-668-4163 to make your appointment. Mention this ad to receive a consultation, exam, and x-rays if needed for only $20. Call 512 668 163 and begin your journey to hope, healing, and health. You can tell the Pitmasters are making the magic happen every time you walk through the doors of Kreitz Market. The delicious smell of smoked meats greets your every visit. Not going to be in Lockhart for a while? Kreitz Market ships nationwide. Stop by Kreitz Market at 619 North Colorado in Lockhart or find us on the web, kreitzmarket.com. That's K R E U Z market.com. No sauce. No forks, just good taste, naturally. Hello, Americans. Mark Twain said, a broken promise is better than no promise at all. Well, you and I both know when we make a promise, we keep it. Chuck Nash Auto Group has been doing that for years. They offer up the kind of one-on-one -on -one service that will follow the taillights of 
your pre-owned vehicle deep into that gorgeous Texas sunset. By the way, Chuck Nash will give you $750 more for your car, buy or trade. And now you know the best of the story. Let First Lockhart National Bank reward you with First Star Rewards Checking, where you earn on your rewards checking balance, get free ATM refunds nationwide, plus so much more. Come on by one of our locations in Lockhart, Kyle, or South Austin to visit with one of our bankers to see how you can get started earning rewards today. You can also check us out online at firstlockhart.com. All right, we're back here at Edgewood Veterans Stadium where the final score was your Lockhart Lions 63, Kennedy Rockets 0, and we're still trying to figure out everything because this was just a crazy, crazy night. Did you say five carries 179? Yeah, and we'll let you know here in a minute on who got that. <laughs> It's, it's an amazing total no matter where. It's, it's literally like somebody got on a video game and was playing the football on a video game against the easy setting. Yeah. That's the kind of stats that were put up tonight. Holy cow. I'm still in amazement. Yeah. And uh, welcome to the first Lockhart National Bank post-game show. And uh, we just seen the Lockhart Lions defeat San Antonio Kennedy here at Edgewood Veterans Memorial Stadium of a final total of 63 to nothing. A huge win for the Lockhart Lions gives them their fourth win of the season, which surpasses their last two season win totals, where they went three and seven in the district, you know, throughout the season. Now they sit sit at a perfect uh, five at 500 with four wins and four losses. Lockhart Lions will be facing Tyvee next week. They're at Lions Stadium. And uh, before we get to the to the players of the game, let me give you a quick uh, Meitler Storage game break. Medina Valley defeated Memorial Minutemen right here at Edgewood Stadium last night, 49 to nothing. Bernie Champion with 8.58 left to go in the third quarter over uh, Uvalde, 34 to 7 at the Honey Bowl. Tyvee at Alamo Heights, it's in a shootout right now with 60, 6.54 left to go in the third quarter. It's Tyvee 35, Alamo Heights Mules 28. And here at Edgewood Veterans Memorial Stadium, it is your Lockhart Lions coming away with their fourth victory of the season in a convincing fashion, 63 to nothing over the San Antonio Rockets. And, uh, Scott, let me go in and get some of these totals that I have right here and uh, let you uh, hand out the Farm Bureau defensive players of the game. Oh, goodness. Well, you know, we could have gone with about six different guys, but – you have to go where the big money talks. And we had two gentlemen that will be co-defensive players of the game just because of their big-time plays that they made tonight. Senior Devin Clark, six foot five basketball player, also safety for the football team, had a 90-yard pick six early in the game to give us the lead. Devin Clark, senior, his first varsity touchdown, a pick six of 90 yards. The other guy, Eddie Tukar, who was not to be outdone, he's a junior. Eddie Tukar scored on a 98-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown. So those will be your two co-defensive players of the game. And, again, it could have been anybody. It could have been any of six or seven guys, but those are who we went with because of the big yardage they got with their touchdowns. And let me just finish totaling it up here, but I'll give you the offensive player of the game. But before I do that, let me throw out a, a couple of stats at you real quick. Lockhart Lions totaled 412 yards on the ground today. And uh, – I could count the carries by hand. You got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, eighteen carries for four hundred and twelve yards total for the offense. And uh Daytron Ellison had five carries for 135 yards and one touchdown. He's not even the offensive player of the game. <laughs> the offensive player of the game goes to Daquan Ellison. And listen to this, five carries, 179 yards rushing, and three touchdowns. And he didn't get his first touch until halfway through the second quarter. That's correct. And I, I'm about to get these uh, totals out of yards per carry. But, you know, congratulations to Devin Clark and uh, 
Eddie Tukar for being named the Farm Bureau Defensive Player of the Game, and Daquan Ellison, the Chuck Nash Offensive Player of the Game. And, Scott, all the way around, we could have handed this award to a numerous amount of people, but there's these three Lions that stood above as Devin Clark got his first touchdown as a Lion and uh, returned it 90 yards for a touchdown to for the first turnover of the game. And the last turnover of the game for the Lions defense, Eddie Tukar picks it up at the two and scampers 98 yards for a touchdown. You know, altogether, Lockhart picked up nine turnovers in the contest tonight. Six of those were interceptions. You know, and, oh, man, it's it was a great defensive output for the Lockhart Lions as well as offense as – San Antonio Kennedy Memorial had twice the amount of plays offensively than what the Lockhart Lions had. Well, and another thing, I, I want to reach out to him again because I coach him in basketball. Cortland Zambrano, senior basketball player, scored his first varsity touchdown tonight off a nice catch in the end zone because it got deflected and he was able to make the catch. So we had two guys score their first varsity touchdowns tonight. But – uh Again, it was all Lockhart, and it, the weird thing about it was, though, yes, we had the yards in the big plays, but Kennedy moved the ball on us kind of like we weren't even there sometimes. Exactly, exactly. You know, the great hard running by Sandoval, who uh, did a tremendous job, as well as Sanchez. And, you know, Sanchez did have six interceptions, but you got to give it up to the defense. And But when Sanchez was out there making moves with his feet, he created some space to complete several passes. He got it. And then with Sandoval, hard nose running, you know, it, it was a good running day, you know, offensively for the San Antonio Kennedy Memorial, I mean, San Antonio Kennedy Rockets. But you cannot overcome nine turnovers and think that you, this game was going to be close. And as I wanted to get the totals right now, per carry, Lockhart had averaged 24 yards per carry. Again, a video game. Yes, 24 yards per carry and, you know, 412 yards on 17 total carries. They had, you know, four, five, six, six touchdowns on offense. Well, you know, we'd like to go on and brag and brag about what happened tonight, but we have to get McKelty back out there on that bus, and she's yes. got to close up shop here. So we probably ought to do the same. Yes. We want to thank our team, first of all, the Rock and Rev, Randy Fry, the QA up there in Missouri. We appreciate what you do, sir. Thank you very much. Again, Lion Country Broadcast Network would not be anything without you. McKelty Altier, the brains of the organization, the senior producer for us, as she does what she does and did a great job tonight. And again, for the Sarge, Emilio Juarez, as he does what he does, trying to keep up with the stats tonight had to be just fun as all get out. And, uh, you know, and his brain's already smoking because of all the numbers he had to add up. Yeah. And uh, and myself, Scott Smith, the play-by-play. -play. And all the guys here in the booth, my gosh, these guys are awesome. Yeah. I wish this was kind of yeah. our stadium. And, and, you sometimes. know what? I tell you what, they tore up that Christ Market barbecue like if it, they were a pack of wolves on a dead cat. <laughs> it, I don't even think the papers survived. <laughs> <laughs> so, again – <laughs> we want to thank all these guys we want to thank them for the hospitality i had a great birthday tonight watching this this evening uh thank you for listening and we'll call it a good night